In a huge dark cave among stone columns, cobwebs and luminous mushrooms, poisonous spiders of impressive size crawled. A young man stood nearby, hiding behind one of the columns and watching the spiders. His name is Fang Tian. He is an assassin. Now he is completing this shadow spider task. To complete the task, he needs to collect level 20 shadow spider venom. Currently, 8 out of 10 have been collected. Spider venom has a paralyzing effect and can also be synthesized. As a reward for completing the task, he will receive 240 units of experience and 1,000 silver coins. Fang Tian looked out from his hiding place, and seeing a spider, quickly jumped out from behind a stone column, thinking that this was the game world in which he had been living for 12 years. Twelve years ago he was involved in this game, only thanks to the rewards for the tasks he is still alive. This world is full of all kinds of monsters and other races. There is danger everywhere. He attacked the spider from above, waving his blades and thought that there was a lot of danger in tasks like this. He landed on the ground, cutting off the spider's leg in one fell swoop, and then threw his blade into the air to catch it more comfortably. He raised a determined glance at the remaining enemy and without hesitation rushed to the attack, thinking that he was already accustomed to danger. He was almost approaching the spider, but suddenly he received a message from Hubbard with an urgent task. He needs to leave the game immediately. Fang Tian was clearly not happy about this message. It distracted him from the battle, and he missed the spider's strike. The spider wounded Fang Tian in the shoulder, and he fell to the ground, after which the spider immediately attacked him from above. But Fang Tian quickly rose to his feet and ran to the nearest shelter. Finally, he looked back and then stopped behind a column and opened the game menu. He touched the central panel with his palm, and the entire environment around him began to disappear. The system reported that he was leaving the game. An order was received to exit the game. The game duration was 112, 129 hours and 23 minutes. He needs to prepare for the transfer. After these system messages, Fang Tian's body began to disappear into pixels, and he thought that in 12 years, he had never left the game world. He even has vague memories of the real world. In the real world, in one of the nooks and crannies, a bright glow appeared from the portal from which Fang Qian emerged. He looked around and noticed that he was in some kind of huge hangar and thought, is this the real world? Strange, usually he is given tasks only in the game. Why did he tell him to leave the game this time? He felt pain in his arm and realized that the attack had a paralyzing effect. He needed to treat the wound. He sat down on a nearby box and began to bandage his arm, thinking that this level 20 shadow spider was really strong, just like the rumors said. Suddenly someone approached him from behind. This person reached out to him with his hand, but Fang Tian immediately reacted and put a blade to the throat of this person. The man smiled and said that his reflexes were in excellent condition as always. Fang Tian removed the blade when he saw Uncle Hubbard in front of him and thought that this person was giving him a task. He always gave him a task in the game, and his name was Hubbard. Hubbard lit a cigarette and hit Fang Tian on the head with a folder, saying that this was his assignment. Fang Tian took the folder and asked, Is the task not in the game? Hubbard responded that since the assignment was a little special, he could use it as a grade. He wants him to meet this person. Fang Tian took out documents from the folder containing information about the person Hubbard was talking about. He saw his portrait and learned that he was the chairman of the trade union. While Fang Tian was looking at the rest of the documents, Hubbard exhaled smoke from his mouth and said that this mission will last a long time, so he wants him to remember one thing. He must not let anyone know his secret. He put his hand on his shoulder and said what was especially important was that he was not allowed to use his powers in the real world and also use his way into the game. Did he understand it? Fang Tian lit a flame in his palm and was about to burn the documents with a gloomy face, but Hubbard hit him on the head and exclaimed, didn't he tell him not to use his powers? He pointed his finger at him and said that if he wore those clothes, people would think he was a cosplayer. He needs to change his clothes, otherwise he is too conspicuous. Fang Chan asked blankly, is he a cosplayer? Uncle Hubbard went to the exit and said that first they need to get out of here. They approached the hangar gate and Hubbard opened it, letting in fresh streams of wind. Fang Tian narrowed his eyes from the bright light outside, and he and Hubbard went out onto the roof, where a beautiful view of the shimmering city at night opened up. Fang Tian walked to the very edge of the roof and asked, is it normal for him to feel a little tense in an unfamiliar environment? Hubbard followed him and replied that he had been in the gaming world since childhood, 
so he was not familiar with these things, so he should not worry. He approached him and Fang Tion agreed, and then Hubbard hugged him and said that in order for him to better fulfill his mission as a man, he would give him two pieces of advice. He started pulling his cheeks and said that firstly, when he is nervous, then let him continue to smile kindly. His look became serious and he said that secondly, if he is looking for a girl, then let him look with big breasts. Fang Tian asked why. Hubbard's face darkened, and he replied that because women with large breasts are usually stupid, and ordinary intelligent women are too creepy. Fang Tian smiled wryly and replied that he understood him. Hubbard put his hands in his pockets with a smile and said that that would be all then. Let him get to work. Time has passed. At an unknown headquarters, a man was looking at a photograph of two guys near a car. In the photo, they were both standing by a car near the seashore. One had black hair, and the other had red hair. He was exactly Fang Chan's target. The red-haired man put a photo of himself and his friend on the table, and a girl approached him, saying that lately there have been frequent changes in their jurisdiction. She thinks it's strange. The man replied that he thought everything would be okay. Does she have anything else? She adjusted her glasses and said that they had found that guy. The man was surprised and asked if he had been found. Where is he? She showed him his location on the tablet and told him that the Wetside Public Safety Bureau had found his location. The man slammed his palm on the table and exclaimed, Bureau. He jumped up from his chair and said that she should take him there now. Meanwhile, Fang Chan was sitting in the police station. His clothes were dirty and there was a plaster on his face. A department worker was sitting nearby, minding his own business, while Fang Chan was biting his nails and wondering if he would be able to deceive the commander of the T-27 3rd District. A few hours ago, Hubbard gave him new clothes and told him about his fake history. He lit a cigarette and said that his role was that of a tramp who was kidnapped by human traffickers ten years ago. Tang Ran, his target, will definitely come and take him away, but this person is not that simple. He gave him a serious look and said that he must not be frivolous until the next instructions came. This task is much more difficult than solving problems with shadow spiders. Fang Chan continued to think about this, and at the same time, Tang Ran arrived at the police station along with his secretary. They walked into the corridor and he asked where is this guy. She replied that he was outside the door. Tang Ran knocked and the station worker immediately ran to the door, saying that he was coming. He opened the door and Tang Ran walked into the room with his secretary. Fang Tian looked at his face from under his brows and thought that the target of his mission was him, the commander of the T-27 3rd District, Tang Ran. Tang Ran looked at Fang Tian in surprise, and his secretary said that she heard that he was being mistreated by traffickers. Tang Ran reached out his hand in shock, but Fang Tian jerked his head, avoiding his touch, and then he crouched down to level their faces at the same level. He smiled slightly and told Fang Tian not to be afraid. He is a friend of his father, Tang Ran. When he was a child, he saw it. They will go home, does he agree? Fang Tian looked up at him and replied that he agreed. In the morning, they arrived at a small house and Tang Ran took Fang Tian to his room, where there was everything he needed. Fang Tian looked around awkwardly and Tang Ran said with a smile that from now on this will be his room, he will live here. Fang Tian noticed a frame with a photo of two friends on the table and asked, Is this his father? Suddenly a woman's voice was heard from the corridor. She called her dad and asked if he had already arrived. She ran to their room and asked what he looked like. He is tall. Is he handsome or not? She looked into the room and Tang Ran told her to be quiet. Let her not pester Fang Tian. Tang Ran told Fang Tian that this was his daughter. Let her introduce him to everything around him and he will bring him something to eat. He left, and his daughter stood in the aisle with a smile, looking at Fang Tian. He also looked at her with some surprise, and then she took a few steps towards him. She came so close to him that Fang Tian involuntarily pressed himself against the table, and she said that now they live in the same house, they should get to know each other. Fang Tian, as if on cue, waved his hand in a greeting gesture and said that his name was Fang Tian. The girl was at first surprised by his gesture, and then laughed hard and said that she didn't think he was using the greeting from the game so funny. This is similar to the greeting often used by professional NPC assassins. She also used the greeting gesture from the game and said that her name is Tang Kayan, she is a magician. Fang Tian said that the profession of a magician is very powerful. But what is NPC? Tang Kayan ignored him and ran her finger along his chin and said that he looks pretty good, 9 out of 10, he seems very shy, so there shouldn't be a problem. 
Her eyes lit up with joy, and she said that now that they had met, she would take him to some fun place. After a while, she led him somewhere, dragging him along by the hand, and said that this was the place. They approached the computer club building, where players were sitting at computers in virtual helmets. Fang Tian asked what was so interesting about this place. She replied that it was a gaming club. Everyone here is playing a game called Fantasy. Players just need to put on the device, and then they can get into the game. Everything is very realistic and interesting. Fang Tian thought Fantasy. Why does the game have the same name as the game world he lives in? Tang Kian smiled and said that since she had a game today, she would show him how to do it. At the same moment, her friend approached her from behind and displeasedly asked why she was taking so long. He was very upset and said that today their physics class fought with the chemistry class, they called for help, and they were beaten with a score of 0 to 3. Tang Kian turned to Fang Tian and, pointing her hand at her friend, said that it was her classmate Luo Jianbing. Fang Tian greeted him and Tang Kian, taking the gaming device, winked at Fang Tian and said that she would first defeat him quickly and then return to him. Fang Tian smiled and agreed, then Tang Kian put the gaming device on her head and her classmate said that their class needed her. Her opponent asked if she chooses base mode or peak mode. She replied that she would choose the peak, victory, or defeat. Her opponent replied that there would be no problem with that. An inscription appeared on the big screen saying that the game had started and Luo Jianbing, putting his hand on Fang Tian's shoulder, said that this is great, with peak mode they have great chances. Fang Tian looked at him and asked why. He replied that if she had chosen basic mode, then that guy might have equipment stronger than Tang Kian. In peak mode, both sides have the same number of points to distribute skills, and the equipment will also be balanced in properties, so it is more fair. Moreover, they have already lost three matches. If they lose five games, they will have to pay for internet access for the opposing class for the entire month. Fang Tian said that no wonder, when it comes to money, no one wants to lose. Meanwhile, Tang Kian and her opponent were already in the arena and preparing for the fight. Tang Kian used a magic staff as a weapon, and her opponent used a shield and a hammer. Fang Tian looked at the big screen where the fight was being broadcast and opened his mouth in surprise, thinking that he knew this arena. Isn't this the world he lives in? How can they be in two places at the same time? Both in this room and in that world. At the same moment, Tang Kian began to attack. A huge fireball flew towards her opponent and Fang Tian began to watch the battle, thinking that this was a fireball, at least level 25 magicians could use it. Tang Kian swung her staff again and fired several fireballs at her opponent, and he, defending himself with a shield, said that it turns out she was a star mage. Tang Kian activated the skill to see her and her opponent's condition and the radius of the upcoming attack. She found out that she was running out of mana and thought that the continuous attack had only taken off a quarter of her enemy's health. His defense was not weak. She needed to restore her magic in order to attack again. Her opponent noticed that she was no longer attacking and asked with a smile, can she no longer use magic? He rushed to the attack and shouted that then it was his turn. Tang Kian replied with a smile that a mage can always use magic. She jumped high and then slammed her staff into the ground using the Ice Spikes spell. Ice Spikes instantly began to spread across the ground and the enemy's foot fell into an ice trap. Tang Kian's classmates began to rejoice and say that this was amazing. One hit with Ice Spikes on an enemy and he will no longer be able to move and will begin to freeze. Another classmate said that the Ice Spikes ability can only be used at a very short distance, which requires a clear mind and the ability to calculate the enemy's trajectory. Yuo Jianbing began to root for Tang Kian and said that she is his idol, he believes in her. Fang Tian looked at the screen in surprise and said that Tang Kian is a very smart mage, she is very strong. Meanwhile, her opponent was still frozen in ice, but despite this, he began to smile. Fang Tian noticed his sly smile and said that this was bad. He clearly had some kind of trump card hidden. A red aura began to emanate from the opponent's Tang Kian, and Fang Tian found it familiar. He took a closer look and thought, is this really a wild charge? Suddenly, the armor on Tang Kian's opponent began to crack. His muscles increased in size, and the armor completely broke, scattering pieces all over the area. The ice that bound his leg cracked, and Tang Kian exclaimed in surprise, her ice spikes didn't work. At the same moment, her opponent quickly rushed from his place and headed towards her. Tang Kian immediately put up an ice shield in front of her, but
but her opponent broke the ice barrier with one blow of his hand, and from such a blow Tang Kayan was thrown to the very end of the arena. She hit the wall and became dizzy, unable to move anymore. Liuo Jianbing exclaimed that this was a wild charge. He was able to avoid the ice spikes at such close range. This guy is a real pain. In despair, he grabbed his head and began to mutter, What should they do now? How did this happen? Does that mean they lost? It's over. Tang Kain is stunned. She will not be able to withstand the warrior's attack in close combat. What should they do? At the same moment, Tang Kain's opponent had already managed to approach her and swung her hammer to strike. With a sharp swing, he hit her with a fiery hammer and her health dropped to zero. Her body in the game world began to dissolve into pixels, and the students from the chemistry class said that this was amazing, a pretty good fight. Only Fang Chan was very worried about Tang Kain's condition. He got scared and thought, is she seriously wounded? He approached her and asked if she was okay. She ignored him and her opponent took off the device and laughed, saying that she lost to him. They already have four wins, only one game left. Will they play or not? Tang Kain took off her gaming device, furrowed her brows and straightened her hair, and Fang Qian, not seeing any injuries on her, thought, why is she okay after being so seriously injured? Tang Kain stood up from her chair and told her classmates to fight. Why don't they fight? Do they want to fail in chemistry class? She shouted, which one of them will play next? Her classmates immediately began to look away in all directions, avoiding her gaze and remained silent. Tang Kain got angry and shouted that they were just cowards. Meanwhile, Fang Qian was thinking, why did the damage they received in fantasy disappear when they returned? It's none of his business, but he has to find out for himself what's going on. Fang Qian resolutely said that he would fight the last battle. Tang Kain was surprised by his words, and then hugged his hand and happily asked, does he know how to play? Looks like he's doing well, the last round is up to him. Fang Chen replied that he just wanted to try. But Tang Kain didn't listen to him any further, she threw him down on a chair and was about to put the gaming device on him. But Fang Tian grabbed her hand and asked her to wait, saying that he had never used this thing. But Tang Kain did not listen to him, she put the helmet on his head, and he thought that in this case he would try to enter the fantasy through this thing, and he would see what difference it made. He found himself in complete darkness and felt the same feeling he had when he entered the game world. The system reported that it was starting to check the player's information. Attention. Data anomaly detected. Data integration begins. Launching automatic recovery processes. Integration is complete. After the system messages, Fang Tian's face was illuminated with a bright light. He found himself high in the sky among the clouds, and system windows appeared in front of him. He looked around and thought that he had never seen this before. Is this the game login screen? He saw a system window in front of him with a choice of mode and thought, what is this? Suddenly a new system window appeared in front of him with a message that the player Liu he had challenged him in peak mode. He can accept the challenge or reject it. Fang Chan thought, Liu He, is this the guy who just fought against Tang Kian? Either way, he must rise to the challenge. He pressed the button, agreeing to the fight, and the system windows began to disappear, crumbling into pieces. A panel with health and mana appeared, as well as new system windows with three classes to choose from, warrior, assassin, and mage. The system informed him that he needed to select a class. Fang Tian noticed the skills on every system window with a class and thought, are there all the skills he can learn here? He chose the assassin class and shadow streams reached towards his hand. The sky where the sun had recently shone changed to a night sky illuminated by stars, and Fang Tian's body began to glow. He put on the clothes of an assassin and slowly opened his eyes. A system window immediately appeared in front of him with a message that the player Tang Kian wanted to add him as a friend. Does it accept the request? Fang Tian agreed and Tang Kian wrote him a furious message asking what is he waiting for. The battle is about to begin. Let him choose his skills quickly. The system reported that his opponent Liu he had finished selecting skills. In 20 seconds the battle would begin forcibly. Fang Tian quickly opened the skill window and thought that he would then select one of the familiar skills. The system reported that the choice of player skills was completed, the battle began. The location immediately changed and Fang Tian felt like he was being sucked into something. Meanwhile, his opponent appeared in the arena in the dense forest. He looked around and thought that he could not believe that the battle would take place in a dense forest, which was not suitable for war. And he doesn't know which class he chose. 
Meanwhile, the students were watching the fight and Liu Jianbing asked where Fang Tian was. Why is he not visible? Tang Kian replied that he had chosen the assassin class, so he would hide. They will hope he doesn't lose. Liu Jianbing grabbed his head and said that a warrior with enormous strength and defense is the end for a weak assassin. Everything is over. Meanwhile, Liu he stood in the middle of the dense forest and began to feel nervous. He looked at every corner of the forest and thought that so much time had passed and this guy had not appeared yet. Is he really an assassin? At the same time, Fang Chan was hiding in the bushes behind him. He watched him and thought that he was in a defensive position, looking like an experienced fighter. However, in the jungle arena, the assassin has an advantage over the warrior. He jumped out of his hiding place and thought that he needed to do this. He decided to hit his opponent from behind, and suddenly something happened that interfered with Fang Tian. Liu he turned around a little and Fang Tian stabbed him in the face, which surprised him greatly. After running a little further, Fang Tian turned around and thought, what's going on? He aimed for his throat, but why did he miss? At the same moment, Liu he launched an attack, he raised his shield and placed it in front of Fang Tian with a sharp movement. Fang Tian defended himself from the blow with his hands and increased the distance between them, after which Liu he raised his shield and attacked Fang Tian, this time using the wind hammer technique. He swung his hammer all over the area, causing a strong whirlwind and Fang Tian felt that strange feeling again. He quickly ran away from the blow, his hands shook, and he thought that it had happened again. Why hasn't this feeling gone since he entered this game? At one moment a strong stream of wind still reached him and he could not dodge, and the blow threw him back and he lost half of his health. He began to get very nervous and, looking up at his opponent, exclaimed, What is happening? Liu he slung the hammer over his shoulder with a smile and asked, He's not new to this, right? He chose the assassin class. Although the jungle arena is a great battlefield for an assassin, the warrior always wins. He started spinning his hammer and said that he didn't want to waste time, so they would end this now. He quickly rushed at Fang Tian, raising his hammer above him, and Fang Tian, realizing that he had half his health left, thought, will he really lose? Suddenly a system window appeared in front of him, asking if he wanted to turn off the free mode so that he could fight using his skills and abilities on his own. Fang Tian quickly read the message from the system and was distracted. At the same moment Liu, he approached him at a fairly close distance and attacked, after which an explosion caused by the blow occurred. All the students watching the fight saw this and began to worry. Just a few seconds ago, Fang Tian thought, what kind of free mode is this? Liu, he almost approached him and Fang Tian agreed to use free mode, thinking that he would test it now. He began to quickly use clicks because nothing else hampered his movement. His opponent's hammer was almost close to him, but he quickly swung his blade and parried the blow. Liu he was very surprised by this, and from the recoil he backed away, exclaiming, Did he block his attack? Did he really turn on free mode? Fang Tian quickly found himself at the edge of the arena and disappeared among the bushes, disappearing from sight. Luo Jian being asked in surprise, Was he really using free mode? He pointed his finger at the screen in admiration and told Tang Kian that he had never seen such a battle. Where did she find such an expert? She, too, was very surprised at the skills of her new friend and replied that she did not know that he was so good. She thoughtfully raised her hand to her chin and said that ordinary players choose semi-free mode to feel the convenience of playing with the help of game programs. Only advanced players will be able to launch a free mode in which they will use their own skills and abilities. If Fang Chan uses free mode then? At the same moment, Liu he was wandering around the arena and thinking, how was this assassin able to block his attack back then? Did he block it because he was using free mode? Or is it just a coincidence? He looked around nervously, covering himself with his shield, and thought that it didn't matter. Even if he has free mode, he is very difficult to control, so he will still win. At this time, Fang Chan was hiding in the bushes. He threw the blade, spinning it in the air, and caught it, thinking that he could finally move easily. He didn't even know that there was a free mode. Immediately after that he rushed forward and jumped out of the bushes. In an instant, he approached his opponent and dealt him a critical blow to the back of the head with two blades. Liu he was surprised and, seeing that he had half his health left, exclaimed, Did he cause so much damage with an ordinary blow? At the same moment, he quickly turned around and Fang Tian began to circle around him. Liu he swung his hammer, about to strike, but Fang Tian dodged and said that it was so naive. After that, he jumped up and, spinning in the air, used the backstab ability. 
He quickly got behind his opponent and struck him, and then moved away from him. Liu He's armor cracked, and he received a critical hit. He felt movement near him and quickly turned in that direction, exclaiming that this guy's body was so strange, his attacks didn't work. At the same moment, Fang Tian began to act. He quickly moved behind the opponent's back and brought the blade to his throat, but suddenly stopped. Liu He clenched the hammer in his hands, thought he was a loser, and quickly swung his weapon and hit Fang Tian, causing him fatal damage. Fang Tian's body immediately dissolved and Liu He was very surprised at his victory. The system reported that the game was over, Liu He won. The students in the physics class started getting angry and saying that this free mode guy had lost. Meanwhile, Fang Tian found himself in the main menu, in the sky among the clouds. A system window appeared in front of him saying that he had lost, and he thought that, as he had expected, the game he entered was different from the one where he lived, and after death he did not die. Couldn't he train this way without too much trouble? He decided to exit the game, and the system reported that the command was accepted and the exit began. Fang Tian took off his gaming device inside. Luo Jianbing immediately threw his hand on his shoulder and said that he had succeeded, he almost won. Fang Tian smiled awkwardly and scratched the back of his head, saying that he still lost. Luo Jianbing winked at him and said that he is a great master, he is still good. Tang Kaian folded her arms across her chest in dissatisfaction and wanted to ask Fang Tian something, but she was interrupted by Liu He, who told Fang Tian that with the back attack ability he would have won. The three guys turned their attention to him, and he asked Fang Tian why he stopped. Fang Tian frowned and remained silent, and then after a short pause he smiled and replied that he was simply not used to it yet. After the game, Tang Kaian and Fang Tian returned home. They walked into the yard, and she said he was a great guy. He even made Liu He sweat. She opened the door and immediately froze on the threshold in fear and with a stupid smile on her face. Her father stood in the corridor, displeasedly folding his arms across his chest, and asked where she was taking Fang Tian. She began to take off her shoes and frowningly replied that she just took him with her to introduce him to the surroundings. She quickly ran to her room without saying another word, and Tang Ran followed her with his eyes. After that, he touched Fang Tian with a smile and said that he had made an appointment for him to see a doctor, so they would go to the hospital together. Fang Tian sat down on a chair and asked, to the hospital, but he is not sick. Tang Ran sat down opposite him and said that he knew that he had been through a lot. In general, he is worried about him. Dr. Liao is an expert in psychology, so everything will be fine. Fang Tian looked away and thought that Tang Ran thought that the merchants had kidnapped him and done something bad to him. His attitude doesn't look like he's faking it. Tang Ran noticed that he was silent and asked if something was wrong. Fang Tian replied that everything was fine. He said that he knew his father. What kind of person was he? Tang Ran was a little surprised by the question and said with a smile that they had been friends for many years. He had such strong faith and ambition that he infected those around him with it. He wanted to say something else, but suddenly fell silent and Fang Tian asked, What is it? Tang Ran waved his head and replied that it was okay, everything was fine. He got up from the sofa and said that in order for him to fit into a normal life as soon as possible, he enrolled him in school. He is in the same class as Tang Kaian, so he will go with her. After that, he left him with a gloomy look and Fang Tian thought that he had avoided his question. He remembered the first years of his life in the gaming world. He was riding on a hay cart with Master Carl along a country road and asked him what kind of person his father was. Carl patted him on the head and told him that he just had to remember that his father was a hero. Fang Tian looked after Tang Ran and wondered what he was hiding. Time passed, Tang Ran brought Fang Chan to the hospital and told him not to be nervous, from now on he will be here, there is no longer any danger. He touched the office door and said that Dr. Liao was inside, let him go inside, and he would wait for him outside. Fang Tian walked into the office and saw the doctor standing by the window. The doctor turned around when he heard him come in and asked, He is Fang Tian, right? He is Dr. Liao, his psychologist. Let him feel at home. Fang Tian sat down on a chair and silence reigned between them. Fang Tian looked closely at the doctor, noticing something wrong in him, and the doctor himself broke out in a cold sweat, starting to get nervous from his gaze. He began to walk around Fang Tian and said that he had been informed of the situation, but before they began, he would need his cooperation. He went behind him, squeezed his hand, and said that he would answer a few questions. 
He was about to hit Fang Tian in the back of the head with his pen, but he quickly got off the chair and ducked down, dodging the blow. He then turned around and clenched his hand into a fist, throwing a punch. All the doctor's papers were scattered throughout the office and Fang Tian, pressing him against the wall, asked who he was. The doctor sighed and said the evaluation was successful. He moved his hand in front of his face, throwing off his mask, and Fang Tian saw Uncle Hubbard in front of him. Hubbard smiled at him and then leaned over him with displeasure and said that it was his level 37 curse mask. How did he manage to see this? Fang Tian replied that his instincts told him this, which is probably why he realized that he had disappeared, and he also tried to attack him. Hubbard went to the sofa and said that he accepted his explanation. He sat down on the sofa, spreading his arms to the sides, and asked how he was doing there. Tang Ran treats him well. Fang Tian waved his hand and said that he did not want to talk about it. He has questions for him about that game. Hubbard asked, so he entered that game through his helmet. He thoughtfully looked away and said that everything happened much faster than he thought. Fang Tian asked, what's wrong with this game? Hubbard replied that there are two ways to enter fantasy. Fang Tian asked in surprise, two ways? Hubbard replied that the first way was the entity, which is the way he entered the game. The second is the virtual access he experienced. They are currently doing well and their people are making some noise in the three zones of the game. His next task is to use the virtual state to learn the game. He gave Fang Tian a serious look and said, There is one thing. The physical access method should never be discovered. Fang Tian replied that he understood him. Meanwhile, Tang Ran was waiting for Fang Tian outside and suddenly his phone rang. He answered the phone and asked what is it. His subordinate said that the three fantasy zones were attacked. They could not find a trace of who did it. Tang Ran asked in surprise, How did this even happen? At this moment, Hubbard put on the doctor's mask again and led Fang Tian out of the office while Tang Ran was talking on the phone. Tang Ran noticed them and replied to his subordinate that he understood he would return to the station soon. He ended the call and with a smile asked the doctor how he was. The doctor smiled back at him and said that the treatment takes time, so it would be better for them to come here every week for a checkup. In addition, he would suggest some contact with external things. He looked at Fang Tian with a sly smile and said that, for example, aids such as games could help him be less afraid of strangers. Tang Ran shook his hand and replied that he understood he was grateful to him. After a while, Tang Ran and Fang Tian returned home. Tang Ran walked into the house holding two boxes of gaming devices in his hands, followed by Fang Tian with a smaller box. At this time, Tang Kian was drinking tea. She noticed that her father was holding two boxes of gaming devices in his hands and immediately threw the cup aside, running towards him. She was very happy and said that this was the newest gaming helmet. She had dreamed about it so much. Her father put the boxes on the table and said that these were bought for Fang Tian. The doctor said that this could help him not be afraid of strangers. He wiped the sweat from his brow and said that he would be going on a business trip for a while so let her take care of Fang Chan for him, and let her not play games alone. Tang Kian happily pounced on the boxes and replied that she understood she would do everything. She took the gaming device and winked at Fang Tian, inviting him to follow her. Fang Tian hesitantly followed her, and Tang Ran saw them off with a smile. Fang Tian and Tang Kian settled down in the same room and began unpacking their helmets. She told him that he was so strong yesterday. What level is he at now? Fang Tian looked away and replied that in fact, he only played this game when he was a child, and then he stopped. Tang Kian asked, does he mean that he played this game when he was a child? And he hasn't played since then. Fang Tian hesitantly confirmed her words and Tang Kian, sharply approaching him, said that when they played in the club, he dealt two critical blows. The last movement, the stab in the back, what was that? Fang Tian scratched his cheek shyly and replied that this was an instinctive reaction in times of danger. Tang Kian looked at him resolutely and then slapped his shoulder with her palm and said that he could be a genius player. In response, Fang Tian laughed awkwardly and they continued unpacking the devices. Tang Kian connected the cord to the helmet and said that everything was ready now. She looked at Fang Tian and asked, has it loaded? He confirmed her words, and she happily said that let him come in then, she would wait for him at the point where the newcomers appeared. Fang Chan agreed, and then the two of them put on the devices and immersed themselves in the game world. Fang Chan opened his eyes and found himself in a familiar loading location. A system window appeared in front of him asking him to select a mode. 
he could choose Adventure Mode or Peak Battle Mode. Fang Tian said that he chooses Adventure Mode. The system reported that the player's history has been detected. Since the game was found to be played without authentication, he has the following options. Option 1. Delete the game record and start again. Option 2. He can start the game at the last save point. At the moment, it is not possible to enter this way. Option 3. Quit the game. Once a game recording is deleted, it cannot be restored. He thought about it and said that he had no choice. He would simply delete the recording, just like Uncle Hubbard said. After that, he pressed the button and his entire body began to disappear. The system reported that the player had chosen to delete the game record. Fang Tian's former body disappeared into the game pixels, and the system reported that the recording was beginning to be deleted. Character regeneration, data integration begins. Let him choose a player nickname. Fang Tian called out his name, and the system announced that the adventure game mode was officially open. There will be no prompts during the game, he will explore the world on his own. After that, Fang Tian appeared at the spawn point and looked around. He saw that he was in a medieval city, and thought that this city was not much different from the city in which he lived before. He decided to walk the streets a little, and look around at the same time. The roofs of the houses in the city were of a variety of colors. In the middle of the square where Fang Tian appeared, there was a pillar with the name of the city Pine Town, and around there were stalls with goods. He decided to check his characteristics and saw that he had 7 strength, 9 agility, 6 intelligence, 5 stamina. Hidden characteristics, ingenuity 2 units. There are currently 0 assigned points. He has a level 12 dagger skill. When using a dagger as an attack weapon, he can gain an additional 12 units of speed, an increase in damage coefficient by 0 0.6, and an increase in damage coefficient by 1-2 on vital locations. He has a level 9 backstab skill. When striking an enemy from behind, using this skill increases the damage coefficient by Zoe 9 and increases agility by 0 2. The cooldown time is 10 seconds, 5 units are consumed. And the last skill of soul and mind mastery of the first level, this is a passive skill that increases ingenuity by 2 units. Suddenly Tang Kayan suddenly appeared behind him and touched his shoulder, which scared him greatly. Fang Chan turned around sharply and she waved her hand at him with a smile welcoming him to the game. She invited him to the team and said that since he was a newbie, today she would help him level up. He asked incomprehensibly, leveling up. Tang Kayan grabbed his hand and pulled him along, saying that they would just fight monsters, let him follow her. After a while, they left the city and found themselves on a path that led into the forest. She turned to Fang Chan with a smile and said that in order to turn him into an expert, there were a few important points that she would like to show him so that he could avoid trouble in the future. At the same moment, behind her, some creatures flashed through the grass and approached Fang Tian from behind. A hare with three tails and deer antlers attacked Fang Tian from behind, and he turned around. Tang Kayan at the same moment called out to him and took out her staff, throwing a fireball at the hare. From a strong blow, the hare fell to the ground and dissolved, and Fang Tian received five units of experience. The system congratulated him on his level increase. He received three assigned points. Fang Tian asked, what are assigned points? Tang Kayan was surprised and said that it seemed like he really didn't play such games. She replied, the assigned points are the main characteristics of the player. The initial characteristics of each player are five. With each level, he will receive three points, which he can distribute into any characteristics. There are only four types of characteristics. Strength, Agility, Stamina, Intelligence. Strength increases attack power and defense. Agility increases critical chance, dodge chance, and critical damage increase factor. Stamina determines the number of health units, and intelligence increases the amount of mana and the speed of its recovery. Of course, there are many other ways to increase stats besides upgrading, such as equipment, skill upgrades, and so on. Fang Tian looked at his stats panel and thought, does everyone have five starting stats? But why are its basic characteristics different? Tang Kayan quickly moved behind Fang Tian, throwing ice spikes somewhere in the forest, and said that today he needs to get level 10 so that he can find a mentor to transfer and learn skills. Her ice spikes pierced the hairs that were hiding in the bushes, and she said that when he met the basic skill requirements, he would be able to choose a profession. If he finds a mentor, he can learn the skills. Fang Tian thought that he had been living in a fantasy for over 10 years, but in the process, he had only learned two skills, 
backstab, and dagger. He asked, did she mean that if he became an assassin, he would be able to learn all the class skills from his mentor? Some time passed, they continued to fight the monsters, and suddenly a letter appeared in the sky and headed towards Tang Kayan. Tang Kayan noticed the letter and touched to read the message. When the message turned out to be from Liu Jianbing, he asked for her help, writing that he could not bear this alone. Tang Kayan apologized to Fang Tian with an apologetic smile and said that she was asked to help. She was going to help him raise level 10 in order to find a mentor in the main city to change his profession, but Fang Tian interrupted her and asked with a smile, surely level 10 would definitely be enough to find a mentor. She replied that basically, in addition to the level, he needed some money and meet the stat requirements. How many levels is he missing? Fang Tian showed her his status and pointed to the experience scale, where it was written that he was now level 7. Tang Kayan was surprised and asked, Level 7? Why doesn't he go to the tailor shop in the beginner village and take on a task to expand his inventory? She pointed her staff towards the corpses of the hares and said that these monsters would give him enough materials to complete the quest, and he would also receive additional experience points. Fang Tian opened his inventory and asked, Inventory expansion task? He saw the skins and meat of hares in his inventory, and Tang Kayan confirmed his words, saying that this is not a difficult task, but it takes a lot of time, but since he has almost all the necessary materials, it will be easy. She ran away and finally shouted to him that she needed to go, and let him take the task at the tailor's shop, she would come for him tomorrow. After that, Fang Tian began to fight like rabbits, and after a while returned to the city. Clouds stretched over the city, birds flew, and players and NPCs walked on the city streets. He walked into a street where there were various shops and cafes and thought that fighting without a dagger was inconvenient, so he needed to look at the task that Tang Kayan was talking about. He walked around the corner and saw a small sign with a picture of scissors, he thought. Is the tailor here? He opened the door and walked inside, seeing a shop owner named Kang behind the counter cutting fabric with scissors. Fang Tian approached him and said that he heard that he could get a task from him. He threw the skins and meat onto the table, and the store owner took the skin and adjusted his glasses, beginning to examine the quality of the wool. He said that it looks like he came prepared. He has all the necessary materials, then he will give him another task. After these words, a system message appeared in front of Fang Tian, stating that the task of expanding the inventory was completed. As a reward, he receives an expanded inventory and one in 350 experience points. Fang Tian's level had increased to 8th and had almost reached 9th. He asked the store owner where he could get good weapons. The store owner asked, does he want a good weapon? He would give him one, but he has to perform a somewhat difficult task for him. After these words, he stabbed the dagger into the table, and the system reported that it was a tailor's dagger with a rarity of C. The dagger deals additional attack damage of 15 units, and also adds 3 units of agility and increases critical damage by 2-5. There are no requirements for the weapon. It disappears after the death of the owner. Strength 50 out of 50. Fang Chan grabbed the dagger and, examining the blade, said that this is a good dagger, he will take it. What task does he need to do for him? The tailor said that he should deliver a letter for someone. A system window with a task appeared in front of Fang Tian. He needs to help Ken deliver a letter to the owner of a cabin in the forest. As a reward, he will receive 2,000 units of experience. Fang Tian attached the dagger to his belt and asked, for simply delivering a letter, he will receive so many experience points. The tailor said that by completing the task, he would be able to reach level 10. Fang Chan agreed to the task and said that he understood it. He headed towards the exit and waved goodbye to the tailor, who wished him a pleasant journey. Meanwhile, a roar was heard among the rocks. Tang Kayan, together with her friend, fought with a huge bear chained. Luo Jianbing defended himself from the blow and asked Tang Kayan, Is Fang Tian really a beginner? Did she tell him about the legendary rookie task? She raised her staff and asked what the task was. Liuo Jianbing asked in surprise, doesn't she know about the legendary task in the rookie zone that no one can complete? The mysterious hunter Jane, whose attacks are incredibly powerful. No one can even come close to him, and after failing the task, the player will be banned from entering the game for three whole days. This is a quest for beginners only, it disappears after changing profession, so no player ever completed it. Tang Kain hit the ground with her staff, used her skills, and said that it was said on the forum that the chance of getting this task is 1 in 1,000. It's not that easy. 
After using her skill, the bear burst into flames and roared in pain. As a result, the dead bear fell to the ground. Luo Jianbing put his foot on the dead bear's face and said that this is what he is talking about. Tang Kian thought that Fang Tian should not be such a loser. Meanwhile, Fang Tian reached a lonely hut in the forest. He went to the door and asked loudly, Is there anyone here? He is here to deliver a letter. No one answered him, and he waited a few more seconds, and then opened the door and glanced inside. But suddenly his eyes immediately widened at the sight of the danger, he thought that things were bad. An arrow with a golden tip flew straight at him, cutting through the air. Fang Tian quickly jumped to the side, but the arrow still hit him and wounded his cheek. Fang Tian quickly bounced a few meters back from the door, and after checking his health, he thought that this attack was very strong. The arrow did so much damage to him just by barely grazing him. He looked up at the door to the hut and asked the stranger who shot that arrow, who was he? A young man with golden hair came out of the hut, his face was covered by a green hood, and in his hands he held a bow and pulled three arrows on the string at once. He told Fang Tian that he should open the letter and read what was in it. Fang Tian looked at him in disbelief and then opened the letter and read the contents. Inside the letter it was written that in front of him was the person to whom the letter needed to be delivered. Fang Tian read this out loud and the young man, pointing his bow at him, said that now he will see what kind of person can send him. At the same moment a system warning appeared, he needs to complete the task of delivering a letter. When the character's level reaches level 10, he can go to the main city to meet his mentor as soon as possible. Additional task, he needs to try to defeat Jane, the reward is unknown. Fang Tian exclaimed in surprise, an additional task. At the same moment, Jane fired arrows at Fang Tian and they whistled in his direction. Fang Tian immediately reacted by jumping back and pulling his torso back to avoid the arrows. All three arrows missed him and he landed on the ground, thinking that his attacks were very dangerous. But since in this game he won't lose anything if he dies, he can try to fight him. After these thoughts he ran towards Jane and he, noticing this, smiled and said that this was quite interesting. With a smile, he drew another arrow, which this time shone with a golden glow. The system warned Fang Tian that he was in the affected area, his agility reduced by 35%. Fang Tian's body slowed down and he thought, the affected area? Jane fired an explosion arrow at him and three explosive streams rushed towards Fang Tian at once. Fang Tian noticed the main stream right in front of him and became very worried. He jumped to the side and arched his back, letting the arrow pass by. He landed and turned to look at the arrow and saw it leaving a dent in the ground. The arrow crashed into something and exploded. Then Fang Tian looked at his opponent and thought that if he used this attack again, it would be difficult for him to avoid it in his condition. It seems he can't defeat him, he needs to escape. Jane smiled when he saw his abilities and finally put his bow behind his back, saying that it seems that the old tailor has presented him with a good candidate, he offers him a truce. He threw a bottle of potion to Fang Tian and said let him catch it. Fang Tian caught the potion and the system reported that it was a life restoration potion. This potion restores 500 health immediately after use. The taste is very unpleasant, so he won't be able to drink it all the time. Recharge time 120 minutes. Jane headed back to the hut and told Fang Chan to follow him. Fang Tian followed Jane into the hut, and he hung his bow on the wall and said that he could call in Jane, he needed help. It was a test, he hoped he wasn't offended by it. Fang Tian asked, does he need help? How can I help him? Jane took off his hood, showing Fang Tian his face, and said that he was a half-elf. He poured something into his mug and said that his grandfather's notes mentioned a mysterious passage in a mine in the forest not far from the city. According to his research, there is probably a network of necromancers there. Secret Research Laboratory Raphael Fang Chan asked Raphael. It was a name he had heard before in yodeling. They say that she used to be a great wizard, but for some reason she became a necromancer. She is a necromancer who holds the dead captive and has become a sinister figure in the public eye. He looked at Jane and said that he thought that with his strength he could enter there himself. Why does he need his help? Does he have any problems? John put the mug on the table and replied that there was a white moon wolf, a level 10 elite boss. This wolf always guards the entrance and does not leave there. He wants him to attract the attention of the beast and detain him, and in the meantime he will attack him from behind and kill him. Fang Tian asked if he helps him, what will he get out of it? Jane leaned towards his face with a smile and said that if this is truly a secret laboratory, 
they will find a lot of things there. If he's lucky, he might even find a magic book and learn special skills. So what? Is he interested? Fang Tian thoughtfully looked away and said that there is a chance to get what the legendary necromancer left behind. This risk is worth it. He looked up at the half-elf and asked, what if there was nothing he needed in this so-called necromancer's cave? Jane winked at him and said that even if there was nothing there, he could become his friend. He will do one thing for him, within his capabilities, of course. He gave him a restoration potion and said that, however, this quest is only available to level 10 adventurers, so he will not be able to reach the next level until he completes this quest. Fang Tian took the potion and said with a smile that this was a great deal. A system prompt appeared in front of him. Jane gave him a task. He needs to explore an abandoned mine. He needs to try to kill the white wolf at the abandoned mine and enter the necromancer's cave. Difficulty levels task. Jane received notes from his grandfather's notebook about the necromancer's cave, and he suspects that they may find something in the cave, but first they need to take care of the white wolf that guards the cave. The reward for the task is unknown. Fang Tian read the conditions and exclaimed in surprise, the difficulty of the S-ranked task. Time passed, and by nightfall they reached the entrance to the cave together. Near the mine on the rock, they noticed a white wolf sleeping peacefully. Fang Tian took a closer look and said that the breathing of this white moon wolf is somehow strange. After all, this is an elite level boss. Jane took an arrow from his quiver and said that it had been waiting here for 20 years and it was getting stronger every day. Perhaps the wolf has mutated slightly over the years due to the influence of the necromancer in the mine. The wolf opened his eyes, waking up from a deep sleep, and Fang Tian thought that in general, the difficulty of the task was related to the reward. Previously in fantasy, he took tasks of difficulty B, and difficulty A was generally rare. This is an S-class mission, which means the reward should be very valuable. No wonder Jane waited so long to complete this task. He gripped his blade tighter and thought that if there was something in the mine that could cause the white wolf mutation, at least they wouldn't go home empty-handed if they found it. Jane walked towards the wolf and said that he would repeat it again. The white moon wolf can use the lust for killing. He must provoke it, and while it is distracting, he attacks. Fang Chan replied that he did not have any special skills. He would not be able to hold off the boss for long. Jane pulled the arrow and told him to be sure... He swears by the blood that flows in him that he will kill the white wolf and enter the necromancer's cave with him. After these words with a whistle, he fired an arrow at the wolf and it opened its eyes, and then the beast immediately dodged the blow and landed, looking fiercely at the one who attacked him. He raised his head to the sky and howled at the moon, after which the stomping from the paws of wolves was heard in the forest. Jane told Fang Tian that it called the forest wolves for help, they should quickly finish it off. The forest wolves rushed to attack, and Fang Tian ran towards them and Jane, aiming at them, said that he would cover him. Fang Tian approached the wolves, one of them pounced on him, and he swung his blade, cutting the beast's throat. The dead wolf fell a few meters away from him, and then the second wolf attacked Fang Tian from the side. Fang Tian did not have time to react. The wolf sank its teeth into his shoulder, and the system reported that the forest wolf had dealt him 54 points of damage and slowed down his speed by 70%. At the same moment, Jane shot an arrow and killed the wolf that attacked Fang Tian, and he backed away and grabbed his wound. The blow threw the wolf straight to the foot of the cliff where the moon wolf stood. The beast proudly raised its head, surveying the opponents with its gaze, and then jumped off the cliff and landed right in front of Fang Tian, splitting the layer of earth beneath it. Fang Tian jumped back and said that this wolf has incredible destructive power. Suddenly he felt something and nervously thought, is it a lust for murder? A huge wolf leaned towards him and began to glare at him with a piercing gaze, and the system informed Fang Tian that he was in the affected area. His agility was reduced by 35%. Fang Tian gritted his teeth and closed his eyes, saying that this lust for killing has reduced his agility and is also taking away his health. He will not be able to hold out for so long. He finally gathered his strength and swung his blade to hit the wolf and shouted that he needed to finish this quickly. After these words, he jumped up to get closer to the animals, but it quickly moved away and Fang Tian said in surprise that this wolf is so fast, several times faster than a simple forest wolf. At the same moment, the white moon wolf appeared behind him, and Fang Tian noticed its paw in front of his face. He quickly landed on the ground, and at the same moment the wolf swung and hit him with its paw. 
Fang Tian raised his hands, holding back the powerful blow. The ground under his feet cracked, his hands shook, and he said that this wolf is so strong. The wolf began to howl heart-rendingly, and then suddenly lost its balance, and Fang Tian jumped back, saying that it was close. While the wolf was lying on the ground, Fang Tian decided to act. He quickly approached the beast, then climbed onto its paw and jumped up, approaching its muzzle. He raised his blade, and then in one sharp movement he plunged the blade into the wolf's huge red eye. It jerked its head, causing Fang Tian to be thrown into the air, and it opened its mouth, howling heart-rendingly in pain. The next moment, while Fang Tian was in the air, the wolf rushed towards him and bit through his body. Fang Tian screamed in pain, losing almost all his health, and after that the wolf spat him out of his mouth and Fang Tian rolled along the ground and stopped, hitting a stone hard. The system reported that he had been hit by a devastating white wolf attack, he would continue to take damage and his movement speed would be slowed by 70%. Fang Tian sat by the stone, unable to move, and began to look around and think, Jane hasn't found a way to kill the white wolf yet. Ahead he heard the steps of an animal. He turned his head towards the wolf and slowly stood up, helping himself to rise with his hand. With the last of his strength, he squeezed the dagger in his hand and raised his head, seeing a white wolf rushing towards him with great speed. He clenched his teeth and thought with a determined look that he would let it attack. After that, Fang Tian jumped sharply and, spinning in the air, headed towards the wolf. At that same second, a golden arrow rushed from the direction of the forest with a deafening whistle, sweeping away everything in its path. The arrow passed through Fang Tian's body and pierced the wolf's muzzle, and after that the system reported that the white wolf received a fatal blow from Jane. The moon wolf was successfully killed. His character was attacked by Jane, he received 6 and 103 damage, he dies. Fang Tian's body began to disappear, and he took one last look at Jane who was standing under the moonlight and thought, did the plan work? After death, Fang Tian found himself on the start screen, and the system informed him that his character had died in the game, he needed to wait 72 hours. He will not be able to enter the game before time runs out, and he will lose 10% of his total experience. Fang Tian was upset, and thought that he didn't know that there would be a 3-day ban on entering the game after death. But the difficulty of his rank is really not that easy. He fears that defeating the White Wolf is only the first step to entering the mind. A panel with a timer appeared in front of him, and Fang Tian said that he would just wait. He hoped that in three days Jane would be waiting for him in the house in the forest, as promised. After that, he decided to leave the game, and the system reported that he had been in the game for 4 hours and 23 minutes. Let him protect the life of his character in the game. Fang Tian returned to reality, and it was already dark outside the window. He took off his helmet, put it on his lap, and continued to sit on the bed, looking at one point. After that, he left his room and walked down the corridor to the main hall, where Tang Kian was seeing her father off. She waved her hand at him and said that he should be careful and come back early. Feng Tian asked, has Uncle Tang left? Tang Kian closed the door behind her father and said that her father had some work to do, so he would probably be gone for a while. Fang Tian thought, are you doing at work? Is this because of Uncle Hubbard's plan? Tang Kian hugged him happily and told him not to worry. Her dad had already arranged everything. He would go to school with her tomorrow. Fang Tian exclaimed in surprise to school. The next day came, the leaves of the trees were blowing in the wind, and all the schoolchildren were leisurely going to class. Fan Tian entered his class, where the students had already laid out everything they needed for studying on the table. The teacher stood next to the new student and said that today she wanted to introduce a new student to them. She greeted Fang Tian, and he bowed to his new classmates and said that his name was Fang Tian. Liu Jianding, sitting in the back row, jumped up from his seat in surprise and exclaimed that it was him. The teacher looked at him with a dissatisfied look and said that he should sit down quickly, he should not get up without permission. She pointed to the seat behind Luo Jianbing and told Fang Tian that there was an empty seat, he could sit there. Fang Tian walked to his seat and heard how they began to discuss him. The girl told her friend that this guy is so handsome. Her friend replied that he seemed a little indifferent. The teacher adjusted her glasses and said that now they should have a self-study lesson. After that, she left the class, and in the meantime, Fang Tian settled down on the table. Luo Jianbing turned to Fang Tian, calling him a great master, and said that Tang Kian said that he had only started playing this game recently. How was his training yesterday? Does he want him to help him? 
Fang Tian began to arrange his things on the table and thanked him, then said that he liked to level up himself. He is not an expert, yesterday he died on a mission, and now he will not be able to enter the game for three days. And he's also in the beginner zone, why does he need help from him? He looked at the textbook he took out of his backpack and thought, is this alchemy? Liuo Jianbing asked, he's not on a mission to find an archer in a hut in the forest, is he? Fang Tian was surprised and asked how he knew about this. Was he on this mission too? Luo Jianbing replied that he just heard about it. Did he defeat this archer? Fang Dian remembered Jane and replied that this is not true, he is very strong, he could not defeat him in battle. But he did not kill him, he must have tested him through combat. Luo Jianbing said that he was surprised that he was not killed by that archer. Well, what happened then? Fang Tian replied that he then asked him to help him kill the white moon wolf, and he ended up dying along with the wolf. Luo Jianbing exclaimed in surprise, Is this true? He jumped up from his chair and said that he was a great master, so he had completed the legendary task in the beginner zone. It is said that in the last 20 years only a few people have received this task, all of them were killed by that archer. He didn't expect that he would help him kill the wolf king. Fang Tian rested his chin on his palm in boredom and looked out the window and replied that killing the white wolf is only the first step, he still needs to do a lot of things. Luo Jianbing said that this is a very difficult task. If the first step of this task is so difficult, isn't the next one even worse? His eyes lit up with anticipation, and he asked, Is the reward for such a task very valuable? He reached out to Fang Chan with his hands, but pushed him away from him and replied that he didn't know. He would have to wait three days and then enter the game to find out what would happen next. Luo Jianbing immediately ran to his place and began to hug his legs shouting that he should take him as a disciple. Fang Tian disagreed and Luo Jianbing exclaimed, Why? Fang Tian covered his face with his palm and replied that he has strict rules, so no. After that, the bell rang, which meant the end of the lesson. Tang Kian walked up to Fang Tian, who was being hugged by Luo Jianbing, and grabbed her friend by the hair, saying that his screams could be heard all the way in the corridor. Luo Jianbing said that she should be gentle with him. After that, he fell behind Fang Tian and Tang Kian told him that there would be club events soon. Since he still hasn't signed up for the club, maybe he can show her around and show him what's around. Luo Jianbing told Fang Tian that he should only go to one club, the video game club. Fang Tian asked blankly, video game club. Tang Kian said that the club is a society organized by their school to enrich their interests. There are many clubs, art, singing, literature, debate, and so on. Luo Jianbing said that now, fantasy is the most popular video game of all time. Even the government holds national school tournaments to train potential players, so their school's video game club has become the most popular club, the number one club in the school. Fang Tian looked down and thought that Uncle Hubbard said the same thing in his report. He stood up from his seat and said that then they could look at the video game club. After that, they left the school and headed straight to the video game club, but it was closed. Luo Jianbing was upset and said that the club was closed again. Tang Kian smiled and said that the video game club has 1,000 students registered every year, so it is sometimes closed. They can go elsewhere. After that, they went to another place, and on the other side of the street, other students watched them. The girl stood by the tree and looked at something on her phone, and Liu, he stood next to her and watched the trio of friends. He addressed her as the vice president and said that in the middle is Fang Tian, and next to him is Tang Kian, they are both in physics class. His girlfriend asked if he was sure he was using free mode. Liu he confirmed this and said that the move he made could only be done in free mode. The girl moved away from the tree and said that this was strange, few people knew this man, and he appeared out of nowhere. This girl is the vice president of the video game club, her name is Qin Yin. She looked at the other side of the street and said that she knew Tang Kian. What does he think of her strength? He replied that compared to the average player, she is a true master, but she lacks training, so she needs to practice a little. Kin Yin waved her hand at him with a smile and said that he was now in charge of the human club recruitment test, and as for this Fang Chan he was talking about, she would watch him. After a long day, Tang Kian and Fang Chan returned home. They entered the house. Fang Tian began to take off his shoes and Tang Kian asked him, was he in the newcomer village yesterday? But Fang Tian took off the backpack from his back and replied that yesterday he played a little and died. Tang Kian exclaimed in surprise dead, how did he die? 
Fang Tian awkwardly scratched the back of his head and replied that he was on a mission and suddenly died. Tang Kayan went to her room and said that she had just received a new task yesterday, so she would not be able to help him for two days, so let him try there somehow on his own. He replied that it was nothing. He was about to go into his room, but suddenly Tang Kayan looked around the corner and said that she would advise him to look at the game forum. There is a lot of useful information there for a newbie like him. Fang Tian smiled and replied that he understood. After a while, Fang Tian put on his helmet and entered the game. He saw that he would be able to enter the world in 47 hours and thought that while he couldn't enter, then why don't he go to the forum that Tang Kayan was talking about? He told the system that he wanted to go to the forum and the system reported that the request was accepted and the download began. The sky above Fang Tian's head darkened and shone with stars, after which a panel with a gaming forum appeared in front of him, where there were various tips and discussions, as well as trading in items. Fang Tian was surprised to see the scale of information on the forum. Fang Tian browsed the forum for a while and his helmet began to make sounds. He got into a discussion about the magical scorpion incident. The author of the discussion wrote that at the end of the first year of the game, a huge error suddenly appeared, the player entered a fantasy and somehow took objects from the game world. The 30-level scorpion boss originally present in the game has broken through into the real world. An evil scorpion appeared and began to destroy the city, an incident that quickly caused panic and concern throughout the world. Night had already fallen, Fang Tian continued to sit on the forum. After the destruction of the scorpion, the federal government issued a decree that accessing the game through special means would be considered illegal and would be punishable by death. At the same time, the federal government launched Project Butterfly to select talented players to join the game in order to take direct action against possible in-game threats in extreme cases. After that, there was no news. Since the beginning of the Butterfly project, it is likely that the target of the project will be gaming NPCs. Fang Chan read this discussion and thought, T-27, commander of the third zone. Could Uncle Tang be part of the Butterfly Project? He took off his helmet after leaving the game and threw his head back, saying that it was interesting. Fang Chan spent the following days as usual, doing his homework, playing outdoors at school with his classmates, and returning home as usual. Just like that, three days have passed, now Fang Chan can enter the game. Fang Chan returned from school as usual and looked at the gaming device, thinking that last time Jane promised to wait until he entered the mine, but he doesn't know whether he kept his promise. He put on his helmet and entered the game, finding himself at the place of his death. All this time, Jane was sitting on the edge of a cliff nearby and, noticing him, smiled and said that it seemed that his resurrection was taking a long time. Fang Tian got angry and asked, he didn't just plan for him to provoke the white wolf on himself. He deliberately aimed at him and attacked him, didn't he? Jane jumped on the rock and said that he was right. He was quite smart. He approached him and told him that it would take a long time to use his attack, so that only when the wolf was provoked towards him would the beast not feel threatened and run away. He caught the moment when the wolf was open and hit him and it Fang Tian grinned and said that it was a great plan to kill two birds with one stone. Jane handed him the wolf's fang and said that he should take it. He didn't need it. Fang Tian took the fang and the system reported that it was a wolf fang of C rank rarity. In the fang of the white moon wolf, his power and strength were preserved before his death. Special note, the fang can be used for forging, alchemy, and so on. Jane headed to the entrance to the mine and said that it was all thanks to him it was time for them to hit the road. Fang Tian stopped him with his hand at the very entrance and said that he was an assassin and the penalty for death was small, so he would go first just in case. The system reported a change in the task stage. He needs to explore an abandoned mine. The system window with the task curled up into a scroll and flew deep into the mine, illuminating the way. Fang Tian walked inside and touched the broken helmet with his foot. He looked at the pile of armor on the ground and said that it looked like there were already people here and there was a battle here. Suddenly he noticed something to the side and, sitting down next to the glowing flowers, asked what it was. The system reported that the player's assessment skill is level zero. He cannot evaluate this species. Jane went further and said that he thought it was the flower of dead souls, which was an important ingredient for pharmacists. They continued to follow the shining scroll and crossed the bridge over the abyss. They entered a room and stopped. Jane looked at the end of the room and said that this is it. 
The scroll flew to a huge door at the end of the room, on which was depicted a six-pointed star. They both approached the door, and the system reported that they were susceptible to the strong breath of the undead, their random base stats were reduced by three every ten minutes, and the damage they received increased by thirty percent. Jane became nervous and exclaimed, Breath of the Undead? Fang Tian also began to feel nervous, and said that it looked like this stone door was mainly built to block the breath coming from the other side. Jane came closer to the door and said that what was left of the great undead magician Raphael was most likely behind this stone door. He began to feel the door and said that he knew that the necromancer Raphael, like him, was a half-elf. The gods decreed that those of them who seek power will find themselves in the arms of the dead. He ran his finger over the inscriptions so that there were stars around him and said that he could decipher these spells and what was written here. Suddenly, he fell silent, feeling some unprecedented power, and the six-pointed star began to glow, exuding the breath of the undead. A wave of energy came from the glowing door, causing Fang Tian to cover his face with his hand and exclaim, What the hell? The system reported a change in the task. Upon entering the cave, they will find a seal on the stone door, which will need to be removed in order to enter. At the same moment, in the corridor behind Fang Tian, skeletons began to crawl out of the ground, making groaning sounds. The undead in armor rose from the ground and slowly walked towards the doors. Fang Tian noticed them behind him and immediately prepared for battle, warning Jane of the danger. They stood with their backs to each other and Jane took out a bow, and after that Fang Tian rushed to attack. Zigzag jumping from one enemy to another, he cut the bones of the undead with blades. He stopped for a moment and asked, Skeletons of tenderness? This is strange, why did this happen? He hit another skeleton that was behind him and said that it turns out they were all waiting here. Meanwhile, Jane stood at the seal and began to decipher the signs, pronouncing them at the same time. At one point the seal reacted and threw Jane away from itself, releasing an energy wave. Jane landed a few meters from the door, breaking with his bow, and at the same moment evil spirits approached him from behind. Fang Tian quickly threw a dagger at the evil spirits and asked Jane what the hell happened. John gritted his teeth and replied that this seal was more powerful than he expected. Based on the situation around him, he assumes that behind the seal there are third-level dead beings, evil spirits. Fang Tian, fighting off another attack of the undead, asked evil spirits. He had heard that normal physical attacks were useless against them. He struck the undead with a dagger, but could not penetrate the armor, and asked Jane what should they do now. Their characteristics decrease, and these skeletons are not even affected by physical attacks. This is very bad. Jane shot an arrow at the undead, piercing its head, and helped Fang Tian. He pulled the arrow again, but this time more powerfully, and said that things wouldn't work that way. First, they need to leave here and think about how to open the seal. He fired an explosive arrow into a crowd of skeletons, and they immediately fell apart. The glowing scroll flew into another passage of the mine and Jane ran in that direction, saying that they will take advantage of this, they need to leave. Fang Tian ran after him and turned back to check the situation. He said they didn't follow them, it looks like the skeletons are only active near the seal. They stopped and Jane, having caught his breath, asked what should they do. No one in the village will be able to open such a seal. Fang Tian caught his breath a little and fell into thought. Suddenly an idea came into his head, and he said that he should ask someone. He opened his friends list and decided to contact Tang Kayan, who is currently level 41. He wrote her a message asking, is she online? He goes through a task and something strange happens. It must be a seal, can she open it? He sent her a photo of the seal, and she asked what the hell mission he was on. This seal has level 6. Even the school instructor can't take it off, does he understand? Fang Tian asked, is there really no way? She replied that he could find information on the forums, there were special quest hunters who might be interested in this, but he would have to pay them a lot of money, so he should be prepared to fork out the money. Fang Tian pursed his lips and Jane asked, how are things going there? Fang Tian replied that this was problematic, his girlfriend would also not be able to remove this seal, but she suggested him one way, which would require a lot of money. Jane looked around and asked, is there a lot of money? He pointed to the flowers of dead souls and asked, Did he find these flowers? Fang Tian asked in surprise, Does he mean flowers of dead souls? Jane picked one flower and said that with the help of these flowers potions are created that influence evil spirits. They are very valuable, so they can use them in exchange for money. 
The flower in his hand crumbled, and he said that there is one problem. Although he has a collecting tool, he does not have the skills. If he tries to pick them, it will affect the integrity and quality of the dead soul flowers. Fang Tian looked down and said that he had been living in a fantasy for more than ten years and knew how to collect it, but he didn't know if he could use it here. He looked up at his companion with a determined look and said that he could try. A sickle appeared in Jane's hand, and he said with a smile that then let him take this tool. He handed over the tool to Fang Tian, and the system informed him that he had received the old collection tool from Jane. With this tool, he can use gathering skills. Since the tool is already somewhat rusty, the collection success rate will be only 2%. The activation of the player's hidden skills has begun. He successfully activated the level 15 gathering skill. Collection success is now increased by 1-5%. Collection continuity increase is increased by 1-5%. Fang Tian sat down next to him, starting to cut flowers with a sickle, and a scale with the progress of the collection appeared in front. After finishing the collection, he took the flower of dead souls in his hands, and it did not crumble, as Jane did. The system reported that the player received one flower of dead souls, quality 3, integrity 90%. There was an increase in the collection skill by 8. For a while, Fang Tian continued to collect flowers. After a while, he wiped the sweat from his forehead and said that they were almost done with the dead soul flowers in this area. Jane went to the exit of the cave and said that within two days he would perfect a potion that could cope with evil spirits and about the seal he relied on him. They will meet in the hut in two days where they will discuss everything. After that, Fang Tian opened his inventory and saw three stacks of flowers containing 99 pieces inside. He began to doubt and thought, will anyone really buy flowers of dead souls? Time passed, a girl named Lulu was broadcasting for her fans. She smiled at them and said that they would finish for today. She wished everyone good night. Her viewers started sending her rockets and compliments in the chat, and after that she ended the broadcast. She turned off the tablet and asked the chairman what happened. In the room where she was broadcasting, the chairman was sitting, and next to him stood the secretary and a girl was sitting. Behind it, there was a window that opened up a view of the beautiful city at night. He told Lowell that someone on the forum posted a sale that was getting a lot of attention. He would like her to make a deal with these players, and his main price is 30,000 gold coins. Lulu massaged her wrist and asked, 30,000? What kind of thing is there that costs 30,000? The chairman smiled and said that these are flowers of dead souls. She rose from her chair in surprise and asked, Do flowers of dead souls really exist? The next day came, Fang Tian came to school and sat down at his desk, while his friend was looking at something on his tablet. Luo Jianbing put down the tablet and then turned around and asked what happened to his assignment. Fang Tian replied that he had encountered some problems. There was a seal that was difficult to remove, but Tang Kayan told him to seek help on the forum, so he was waiting for an answer. Luo Jianbing handed him the tablet and asked, Then why don't he take a look at the fantasy forum right now? Fang Tian took the tablet and said in surprise that it turns out that there is such a convenient device. He went to the forum and read the comments on his post with the seal. All the players in the comments wrote to him that nothing would work, even experienced masters most likely would not be able to do it. Liuo Jianbing looked at the comments and said that it seemed like no one had responded. Fang Tian decided to look at other discussions and saw the most popular post at the very top. He asked in surprise why there were so many answers on this topic. He saw his post at the very top in popularity on the topic that he would sell flowers of dead souls. Liuo Jianbing smiled and said that this post has become very popular. It looks like its owner will be rich. Suddenly he fell silent and looked at his friend in surprise and then jumped up from his seat and asked if this was not his post. Fan Tian did not answer him and Luo Jianbing, hugging him, looked at the tablet screen and said that the post about selling materials had become incredibly popular. He deserves to be a great master. Players wrote in the comments under the post, Are these really flowers of dead souls? He has a feeling that this post will become popular. Another player asked if this was true. Another player wrote, Flowers of dead souls. He will give him 2,000,000, no, even all 5,000,000 coins for them. Lulu also appeared in the comments. She wrote that her name is Shen Lulu. She is from the Star Guild. Her guild is very interested in their dead soul flowers. She hopes he will contact them. Here's her contact information. 
Luo Jianbing grabbed the tablet in surprise and exclaimed that in the comments under his post, the number one beauty was Shen Lulu. Fang Tian asked how he knew it was her. He pointed to her profile photo and told him to look at that beautiful head, let him look at her long eyelashes and beautiful eyes. He then pointed his finger at the V icon and said let him look here. That means she's a certified forum user, so it's definitely her. While Luo Jianbing was happy to see her in the comments, Fang Tian asked, Does that mean he is saying that she is real? Can he help him get her contacts? Luo Jianbing answered him with an enthusiastic smile, that of course he would help, she was his goddess, so he would gladly do it. After a while, classes ended, evening came, and Fan Chan and Tang Kian went home. As soon as they entered the house, Tang Kian threw her backpack on the sofa and said that her comrades were waiting for her, so she would immediately get into the game. She winked at him and said that he should bring her juice. Fang Tian smiled awkwardly at her, taking the backpack off his back and watched her put on the helmet with a smile. After that, he brought her a glass of juice and sat down nearby. He put on his helmet and thought that Tang Kian had a task today, so he would go to the forum. At the same time, in one of the apartment buildings, Shen Lulu was lying on the sofa, and her sister was sitting next to her, looking at something on the tablet. She asked her sister why she thought that these flowers of dead souls were really worth 30,000 thousand. The technical department said that this person has only recently been playing, could this be a scam? Shen Lulu yawned, pulling the sleep mask from her face, and said that so far not a single guild has raised level 60, and the flowers of dead souls are the key to passing. Does she really think it's not worth it? The technical department also reported that the flowers of dead souls in the screenshot are of very high quality, the integrity of none of them is lower than 70%, which suggests that the person who collected them has quite high collection skills. She rolled over on the couch and said it was definitely not a hoax. Suddenly, her sister noticed something on the tablet and happily called Shen Lulu, saying that this guy sent her a friend request. Shen Lulu immediately sat down on the sofa and took the tablet, saying that she had been waiting for this all night, and now he had sent a friend request. She accepted his request and Fang Tian wrote her a message saying that he had read her message on the forum and heard that the guild was interested in dead soul flowers. How much are they willing to pay? Shen Lulu's sister looked at his message with dissatisfaction and said that this guy had the opportunity to write to her sister and he immediately starts talking about payment. This man is so cliched. Shen Lulu replied that this was nonsense. The president has watched this guy's collection ability, it's just incredible. She wrote him a message that let him not worry about the price, their star guild will pay him a lot. A guild member joined the conversation and wrote that they could also help him remove the seal he wrote about on the forum. In response, Thung Chan wrote that this is not an easy seal. The cost of opening it will be high, won't it? Shen Lulu wrote that talking about money hurts their feelings, they talk about cooperation. Fang Tian, who was meanwhile standing on the streets of the gaming city, thought that Tang Kian was saying that it would take a lot of money to open the seal. So it's strange that they talk about cooperation instead of money, but he can't refuse an S-Class quest. He asked, and how should he cooperate with them? Shen Lulu replied that everything is very simple. If he has something good, let him first contact their star guild. Of course, if he has questions, he can also ask them for help. Fang Chen agreed, and she wrote that as a sign of sincerity, they would remove the seal he was talking about for free. And as for the flowers of dead souls, what about the price of 15,000 thousand? Another guild member wrote that if he was interested, they could meet in person. Fang Tian thought that the monsters in the game were very strong, and the ratio of real and virtual currency was so high that one gold coin was worth $10,000. Over the years, he had only earned 30 silver coins. He didn't expect that he could make so much money just by collecting some dead soul flowers. No wonder Luo Jianbing always said that professional players earn a lot of money. Meanwhile, Shen Lulu's sister watched their correspondence and asked why he didn't write anything. She lowered the price of 30,000 that the chairman had originally mentioned. Isn't that too little? Shen Lulu smiled and told her not to panic. This is no small thing. Besides, not everyone can work with the Star Guild. Let him think about it. Meanwhile, Fang Tian was thinking, he suddenly remembered Luo Jianbing, who was very happy to see Shen Lulu in the comments. In the end, he wrote that he was satisfied with the price. He would inform where the transaction would take place. Besides, he has one more request. Time passed, Fang Tian came to the meeting place and leaned on the pillar, waiting for Shen Lulu. 
She appeared at the spawn point and Fang Tian saw her in person. She was wearing a snow white suit that matched her class. She walked up to him, and then with a smile, she tossed the locks of hair with her hand and asked, Is his name Fang Tian? Fang Tian confirmed her words, and she, using the assessment skill on him, thought, A mysterious player with advanced collection skills, a level 10 beginner. The ID is the same as the one from which they wrote to her yesterday. Maybe he contacted them from a new account to hide his real one. She approached him with an outstretched hand and said that her name was Shen Lulu. She brought the money, as they agreed. She extended her hand to him to shake and said that they had been texting yesterday. Maybe they will start a deal. Fang Chan looked at her hand blankly, and after a short pause, she awkwardly pulled it back, thinking, what kind of fan would be so cold? She remembered how in correspondence he asked her for one request, he needed her autographed photo. Then her sister said that he even asked for her autograph, he is her big fan. Kingsong City is sparsely populated, and she has a business, so she doesn't need to think about love. Shen Lulu sighed as she remembered all this, and thought that it looked like he was using the newcomer's account as a cover. She waved her hand, lightly moving her hair behind her back, and said that they could start the deal. After these words, an exchange request appeared in front of Fang Tian, which he could accept or reject. He agreed, and Shen Lulu transferred one 500 gold coins and an unknown magic scroll to the exchange window, and Fang Chun in response put all the flowers of dead souls. She agreed to the exchange, and the system informed Fang Tian that he had lost the flowers of dead souls. In exchange, he received 1d500 gold and an unknown scroll. He received a lot of gold coins. Because of this, he will begin to attract the attention of other people. Let him be careful. Fang Tian took out the magic scroll he had just received from his inventory and asked how it works. Shen Lulu replied that he just needed to use this scroll near the seal. She thought that in order to collect so many flowers of dead souls, this person must not be so simple. She will see if she can get him to join them. She smiled and said that they were so happy to work with him. Would he like to see their guild? From this question, Fang Tian felt like an electric shock. He was scared and thought, what does she want to do? Uncle Hubbard said that women are dangerous creatures. He needs to be careful with them. He told her that he had an assignment now, so they could do it next time. She got a little upset and asked, Is he leaving already? Didn't he want a photo with a photographer? Fang Tian ran to the task and finally said that his classmate really liked her. He would send her his address later, so let her just send it to him. Shen Lulu was shocked by these words and exclaimed in disappointment, Classmate. Out of anger, she began to stomp on the ground and thought, What nonsense. She is a famous person all over the internet, and he just said a few words to her and left. She looked indignantly in the direction where he had run away and thought that she should see what this newcomer was capable of. After a while, Thang Tian arrived at the mine where Jane was waiting for him at the entrance. He showed him the potion and said that this was the potion he had been working on for the past few days. Let him use it on his weapon and then he can kill the evil spirits. Fang Chen grabbed two bottles of potion and the system reported that he received two pieces of executioner's potion. When used on a weapon, it will receive an additional damage increase of 0.5. This potion is mixed with some unknown materials that have a good effect against undead. Jane asked, is there a tail behind him? Maybe he wants him to help him get rid of her. Fang Tian, who had long noticed that Shen Lulu was following him, replied that everything was fine. She helped him with removing the seal. She follows him from the very beginning, so he doesn't know what she's up to. Jane didn't like it. But he still agreed and said that he would make one thing clear. If she interfered with the mission, he would deal with her first. After that, they both entered the mine and Shen Lulu, watching them from behind a tree, thought that this was NPC Jane from the legendary beginner quest. According to the intelligence services analysis, this NPC is a highly intelligent elite whose powers are comparable to an elite boss. Has this Fang Chan really gained his trust? She pursed her lips and thought that the dead soul flowers and the seal must be the key to Jane's mission. She should go there and check it out. Time passed. Fang Tian used the potion on his blade and began to fight the undead, cutting their bones into pieces. Having finished, he threw his dagger into the air, then caught it and Jane said that potions really work on the undead. These skeletons no longer respond. They approached the seal on the door, and he said that since they had dealt with these skeletons, now they could try to remove the seal. Fang Chan took out a scroll from his inventory and brought it to the seal, but the system blocked the use of it and reported that to use an unknown magic scroll, 
You need 2,000 units of mana. Its mana is not enough. Jane asked what is it? Is there something wrong with this scroll? Fang Tian replied that he did not have enough mana to use this scroll. Jane turned around and asked, then why doesn't he ask her? Fang Tian doubted, and then turned towards the corridor and told Shen Lulu that he knew she was there, let her come out. Meanwhile, Shen Lulu was hiding around the corner and thought that he was only level 10, he couldn't notice her. He must just be lying. At that same second, the arrow that Jane had shot flashed past her and exploded. He took out another arrow and said that if it didn't come out, the next arrow would kill her. Silence reigned in the passage, and only a lone arrow stuck out of the ground. Shen Lulu hid, and then Fang Tian sighed and said that let her come out already, they need her help. Shen Lulu hesitantly walked around the corner, and asked with an awkward smile when he discovered her. Jane pointed his bow at her, and said that they knew from the very beginning that she was following them. Shen Lulu exclaimed, so if they knew, then why didn't they reveal it right away? Or did they want to see what she was up to? Fang Tian scratched the back of his head and replied that this is not true, she seems to be good. Shen Lulu was happy and thought, so he doesn't think she's bad. This guy doesn't seem so cold towards her. She happily went to them and Jane quietly said that if something happened, he would take care of her. Fang Tian also switched to a whisper and said that he hoped the bad guys wouldn't track them down. He showed her the scroll and asked why she didn't tell him that it took so much mana to activate the scroll. She took the scroll from his hands with a smile and replied that all magic scrolls require the appropriate amount of mana, this is common sense. She walked up to the seal and said that since he didn't think she was bad, she would try. After that, she activated the scroll and the seals compressing it began to weaken. The scroll flew up to the seal and began to shine, and after that the door opened with a heavy shuffling sound. Shen Lulu said that the seal was broken, let them be careful. She cast light magic on her allies and Fang Tian, heading towards the door, said that they should follow him and be careful. Suddenly a system window appeared in front of him with a message that he was under the influence of the power of holy light. Blessing received, physical strength increased. He suffers from the effect of holy light art, bravery. The effect of the blessing is an increase in attack and an additional reduction in damage. Fang Tian stopped and turned to Shen Lulu in surprise, asking, Is she a priest? She answered with a smile that she is the strongest priest of light and darkness. She can do a lot of things. She conjured a few more blessings and Jane said that then they would begin. He pulled the arrow and they entered the room and began to look around. The room was completely empty, but in an instant streams of dead people poured out from the walls and ceiling, ready to pounce on them at any moment. Their eyes sparkled with a ghostly light and ominous energy began to emanate from them. Shen Lulu saw her opponents and said that these are spirits, physical attacks will not work on them. Contrary to her words, Jane fired an arrow at the evil spirit and it pierced the ghostly body of it. Fang Chan watched as the spirit's body dissolved into thin air and then headed towards the opponents and with one dash attacked the other two spirits who were originally heading towards Jane. Shen Lulu began to watch Fang Chan's fight and asked, Did this guy kill four spirits with one move? Is he really playing in free mode? Suddenly Fang Chan stopped and asked nervously, Do they smell this smell? Shen Lulu didn't smell it and asked, Does it smell like something? She doesn't feel anything. Fang Tian turned to the other opponents and Jane said that this is the smell of decay. Most likely it is some kind of high level monster, so let them be careful. Immediately after his words, a huge monster appeared in the room, some of its pieces of skin were altered, and the face of this creature resembled the face of a boar. Fang Tian and everyone else pressed against the wall and Shen Lulu used her assessment skill on the monster. She learned that in front of them was an experimental monster, a mutated pig. This is a level 30 elite boss, the product of a necromancer's failed experiment, capable of accepting simple commands from its creator. Shen Lulu continued to read information about the monster, and suddenly it screamed, spraying its foul drool everywhere. Jane pulled three arrows at once, and Fang Tian prepared for battle and told Jane that they could use his tactics. He was a distraction, and he was looking for a way to kill him. After these words, he rushed to the attack and Jane fired three arrows at the monster at once. All three arrows pierced the monster's body, creating a kind of ladder for Fang Tian. And Fang Tian, meanwhile, continued to resolutely run into the attack. He jumped and began to jump away from the arrows, approaching the monster's face. In a jump, he raised his blade over the monster, and then struck the monster's neck with a swing and jumped to the side. 
followed by a fountain of green blood gushing out of the monster's wound. The monster became very angry, having been wounded, and swung his cleaver, intending to strike Fang Tian while he was in flight. But he noticed this and quickly tucked his legs under him in order to avoid the blow, and as soon as the cleaver approached him, he stood on the cold steel of the blade and in an instant approached the monster and kicked it in the chin. From such a blow, the monster began to lose balance, and Fang Tian, meanwhile, increased the distance between them and landed not far from his comrades who were watching the battle. Shen Lulu just watched, but Jane began to act. He poured the potion on his arrows and said that Fang Tian was only level 10. He would not be able to resist this boss for long. Shen Lulu also decided to act and used her magic, saying that she must find a way to trap the monster. After that, she pointed her staff towards the monster and used a secret capture spell. A purple stream of magic with a powerful beam of light went straight to the monster and collided with it, but it did not cause any damage to the monster. Shen Lulu became worried and exclaimed, Why didn't her spell work? Suddenly her pupils shrank from what she saw. She noticed that the monster raised a cleaver over Fang Tian and shouted that he should be careful. This is a monster of spirits. Fang Tian turned around at her voice, and at the same moment the monster lowered his cleaver, breaking the ground where Fang Tian had just been with a roar. Fortunately, he managed to dodge and a moment later he jumped over the monster and found himself behind it. He grabbed the monster's neck with his legs and grabbed his ear to make sure he didn't fall. After that, he began to hit the monster with his blade with all his might, and it began to wave its arms, trying to get rid of Fang Tian. As they struggled, a crosshair began to appear on the monster's forehead and it froze in place. Fang Tian shouted that it was too late, then Jane shouted back that he was starting. With these words, he fired an explosive arrow straight at the monster's head. This time Fang Tian jumped and did not get hit by his ally. A huge hole appeared in the monster's head, and parts of its body began to crumble into small particles. Jane was very tired from this attack and began to breathe heavily. Fang Tian noticed this and asked worriedly, is he okay? Jane waved his hand and replied that he was just a little overtired and needed a break. Shen Lulu, meanwhile, was thinking, what kind of mission is this? Not to mention the monsters, is this really a mission in the rookie village? When she saw him for the first time, she thought he was just an easy boss. Fang Tian noticed that objects had appeared among the particles of the monster's body and began to wait for the body to disappear completely. A cloak appeared in front of him, and the system reported that he had acquired soul equipment, a rotten patchwork cloak of a rank C monster. This item adds 70 units to defense and 1 in 200 units to health. This equipment also has increased strength and fire resistance. It adds 20% to the power of the blow. A key appeared in front of Fang Tian, and the system reported that it was a rotten key. Fang Tian took the cloak and Shen Lulu, with blazing eyes, said that she heard that there was a chance to find the boss's soul. She looked at the cloak in his hand and exclaimed, Is this true? It is truly the equipment of the soul. She sighed and said that it was a pity that the attributes of this cloak were so bad that it was not worth it. Fang Tian put on the cloak and replied that it suits him, at least it adds strength and health, as well as 20% extra damage. This cloak is only useful when not in combat. He looked up at her with a puzzled look and asked what she meant by boss soul and soul equipment. She exclaimed in surprise, he doesn't even know this. Fang Qian replied that he did not know. Shen Lulu thought that she thought he was an expert replaying the game, but how could an expert not know about soul equipment? She took a closer look at him and thought, could it be that this guy is really gifted? She needs to recruit him into the guild. With training, he can definitely become the strongest player. She sighed and said with a smile that the boss soul is a kind of monster in the game. This monster is simply not susceptible to skills. Magic skills, for example, cannot harm spirit monsters at all. All spells consume spirits, as well as additions to skills have no effect. Only normal attacks work. So these monsters are extremely difficult for a mage to deal with, but there may be additional penalties if killed. She approached him and whispered, Maybe this archer is also the boss of the spirits. She took a step back and said, as for the soul equipment, it's just that the name has the word soul in front of it, there are no restrictions on wearing it, and the attributes of it are much lower than ordinary equipment. So it's all useless. However, it appears that there are people who specialize in acquiring such equipment. Fang Tian looked at his cloak and asked what about his soul skills. Shen Lulu asked, what kind of mental skills? Fang Tian thoughtfully raised his hand to his face and asked, 
Are there any such people? Doesn't she think it's a little strange? The game is deliberately divided into two types, soulful and not soulful. He believes that soul equipment can have an effect on spirit monsters, so spirit skills should also exist against them. Shen Lulu touched the back of her head thoughtfully and replied that maybe, but he was right about one thing. Some equipment effects affect monsters. Fang Tian pursed his lips and thought, soul attributes ordinary, he thinks he understands how it works. After this short rest for Jane, they set off on their journey. They reached the end of the corridor and saw huge doors. Jane said it looks like that boss is the last obstacle. Fang Tian came closer, inserted the key into the lock, and said that this is great, the key fits. After that, the doors opened and an unknown space and a barrier opened up in front of them, which emitted light from itself. Jane entered first, followed by Shen Lulu, but suddenly she hit her head on the barrier and was unable to enter. She backed away and Fang Tian asked worriedly, what's going on? Jane turned around and also asked what was going on. They can't come in. Fang Tian touched the barrier and the system informed him that he was under the influence of certain seals and he would not be able to enter in this state. Jane touched the magical barrier and realized something. He says it is a soul lock seal, a high level seal that the caster added to the soul mark seal. Usually only the caster can remove it. Shen Lulu says that the illusion had such seals, specifically prohibiting players from entering, but she doesn't know how to break it. Fang Tian thinks that the soul seal and the special ban on players entering, he probably knows what it is. He went up to Jane and told him something very quietly. He, after listening to what he said, asks, is he saying this seriously? He leaves and says that he can do what he says, but for now he will move on. After he left, the door automatically closed behind him. The system notifies that he has completed the quest to explore the cave and won Jane's favor. Hint, if he can get inside the wooden door, he can start the next quest. Shen Lulu is surprised by this and asks, is that how he escaped? Fang Tian leaves and says that the system has just announced that the quest is completed and they can now leave. Shen Lulu is angry about what happened and says that she has a feeling that there is something else behind this door. It's such a shame that it ended this way. Fang Tian says that he still can't get in, so it's okay. Shen Lulu took out a scroll that floats above her hand and says that it is very kind. She threw it to him and says that it is a teleportation scroll that only costs 10 mana points, but you can quickly return to the city. Fang Tian caught the scroll and thanked her for it. A system window appears in front of him, in which it is written that he has received a request to add as a friend. Shen Lulu says that they can be friends because she has something else that she would like to talk to him about. However, this is not the place to talk, so they should go back. She teleports away and Fang Chen remains standing in place, looking at the scroll in his hand. After some time in the village of newcomers, Shen Lulu stands in the middle of the street and asks why he hasn't returned to the city yet. Can't he even use the scroll of return? She wrote to him where he was, but the system notified him that this player had disconnected from the network. Shen Lulu was very confused by this and asked if he was offline. She said that she wanted to discuss something with him. This guy is very strange. Fang Tian took off his virtual reality helmet at this time and asked, Is it already so late? And Tang Kayan has returned to her room. He looks behind the door and says that the soul boss, the soul equipment, he believes that this illusion is the same as the illusion he lived in for over 10 years, but is divided into two different worlds by the soul blocking method. He needs to know about it. During the time when he lived in the city for more than 10 years, he met such ordinary players as Tang Kayan and Shen Lulu. Fang Tian closed the door to his room and says that if this is the case, then as long as he uses this method to enter the game, then he should be able to return to the hut. But Kobar's uncle explained to him that it could not be used like that. What will happen if Tang Kayan finds out that he is not in the room? Looks like she's still in the game. But he can't give up on the S-Class mission. He has to try. He extended his hand and lines emitting light appeared throughout the room. These glowing lines begin to gather in one place and his room begins to change around him. A huge door appeared in his room, containing a bright energy core. He passes through this door, his body disappears, and the system notifies that the player Fang Tian is entering the game. Game data is being integrated. Integration has been completed. Fang Tian walked through the door and found himself in an illusion, next to a cave and a hut. He creates a flame above his hand and says that his assumptions were correct. These two worlds do interact. 
His inventory appears in front of him, and he says that it looks like soul equipment can only be used in the game world when he is wearing a helmet. On the other hand, by entering the game in a special way, ordinary equipment loses its effect. Some time later, Fang Qian came to a door inside a cave that he could not go through before. He goes to a magic circle around which various objects are scattered and asks, did he find what he was looking for? Jane uses his energy and creates a magic circle underneath him while many books and bottles fly around him. He turns to him and says that the necromancer Raffiola is a real genius. When she modified the formula and used undead soul fire to transform herself into the first shadow elf, she left behind these lights which contain the power of powerful undead. And this is a formula that can be discovered by having both human and elven blood. He concentrates his energy in his hands and says that this is the opportunity that the Archmage left for him. He must follow in her footsteps and become the next Shadow Elf. Fang Tian stands not far from him and looks at what he is doing. The magical fire in Jane's hands begins to fade and disappear. He fell to his knee due to fatigue when this flame completely disappeared from his hands. Fang Tian goes to him and asks did he do this? Jane turns to him with a weary look and says that he was only temporarily absorbed by the spiritual fire. Fang Tian looks around and asks, besides the undead fire, is there anything else here? Jane points and says that the magic books here are all intertwined and they can't take it with them, but there are a few little things that might be of interest. He points to a small gap in the corner of the room. Fang Tian walked up to this hole and asked what it was. He sees the key and Jane says that it is the key to the lost city. The data says that the necromancer Raffiola studied the Lost Sanctuary for a long time. She originally wanted to use the power of the Holy Sanctuary to achieve her goal, but unfortunately, for some reason, she found herself in a difficult situation. She had no choice but to take the risk and use the power of the undead to become the first Shadow Elf. It was because of her that trust was lost between people and elves, and all the wars began. Fang Tian looks at the key he is holding in his hand, and the system notifies that he has the key to a bank safe in the ruins of the city. This key is engraved with the number 78, with which he can open the safe and access the contents. The main task of exploring the mine has been completed. Mission Score B. Reward Basic Strength, Agility, Physical Strength, Intelligence, and Kai increased by one point. The next part of the s rank mission. The target is the key left by Raffiola. Description, he received a key left by a necromancer. An invisible force pushes him to explore all this. Strength, 30 points, plus 8 points from the level, plus 10 points from the equipment. Agility, 10 points, intelligence, 7 points, physical strength, 6 points, hidden attribute, Kai, 3 points. Fang Tian says that he did not expect that the reward for his rank quest would be an increase in basic skills. The difference between the two worlds does not seem to affect his basic skills. No wonder his basic skills were different from what Tang Kayan said the other day. After all, he had raised his stats a little through quests and training. Jane approaches him and says that they must hurry. This place has been corrupted by the breath of the undead for years. Everyone relied on the external seal as a source of energy to control it. But now that the seal has been destroyed, this place will soon collapse. They run out of this cave at the last moment when the cave collapses behind them. Jane looks at the littered cave and says that the Empire couldn't extinguish the soul flame, so they put a seal on the outside to block the undead's breath. Now that the soul flame is extinguished, they will send someone to check. He needs to find a safe place to complete the transformation of the Shadow Elves. Fang Tian turns to him and says that he should be careful. Jane pats him on the shoulder and says that he is very different from the others. He will owe him. They will see each other when he has time. The Empire will want to track the scent of the undead on them, so he must be careful. He jumps onto a tree branch, and turning to him says that he is looking forward to meeting him again, and hopes that by then he will become stronger. Fang Tian says that besides getting the rewards in this quest, that golden key seems to be an important element to unlock the next part of the quest. He smiles and says that the Lost Sanctuary is very interesting. Sometime later. Fang Tian runs outside and returns home. He opens the door of the house and wipes the sweat from his face. Tang Kian turns to him and asks why he got up so early. Is he going to practice? Fang Tian drinks the liquid from the glass and says that he only did a couple of laps. He thinks the new skill points added yesterday gave him a big boost in strength and speed. He had to train to control his body more precisely. Tang Kian asks, is he free today? 
He doesn't pay attention to her, thinking about something of his own, and she hits the table with her palm to attract his attention. She grabbed the towel around his neck and asked if he was even listening to her. Fang Tian was embarrassed by this and apologized, saying that he was a little distracted. Tang Kaian lets him go and says it's not that important. She means they have a game with their chemistry class today. Would he like to go with her? Fang Tian apologizes and says that he cannot go today. He is about to go to the main city to complete his career change. Tang Kaian sighs and says that then, today he is on his own. Some time later. Fan Tian found himself in the game, and the system notifies that the main city of the seventh region, the City of Ash, is a destroyed city. He uses a teleport scroll, and because of this a bright column of light appears. He found himself in a City of Ashes, a destroyed city. Fang Tian looks at the statue and says that it seems to be the mage Madrina, who is said to have saved the ruined ruined city at the cost of her life when the undead army attacked it. He came to the guard, and he pointed him towards the gate. Fan Tian is in a narrow alley and says that the soldiers on guard say that all the teachers are in the northwest corner of the barracks. He notices a man above whom there was a system window in which it is written that this is the mentor of the killers of the destroyed city. The mentor quickly spins the coin and says that if he wants to be a killer, then he will have to tell him. He tosses this coin and asks, as for a murderer, what is the most important thing for them? Fang Tian looks at him and says that this is a fatal blow. The mentor says that this is an interesting answer. No one can guarantee 100% success. What if it fails? Fang Tian says that then you need to run away from the target. The mentor spreads his hands, a face created from energy appears on his cloak, and he says that this is very interesting. He is pursued and killed, and runs away thousands of miles. It's so exciting. Magical energy engulfs Fang Tian, and this makes him start to worry about it. He notices the system windows, which say that the adventurer has completed the transition. He can get the killer equipment starter, the maximum level is unlocked. He can learn skills from a killer mentor. After completing the task, he needs to go through special dungeons to unlock the maximum level. First ability, Stealth. Conditions, Level 10, Strength 7 points, Agility 7 points. Description of the ability puts him into a state of stealth, at which time his movement speed is reduced by 60%. Two silver coins are required. Second ability, a blow that penetrates to the bones. Conditions, 10th level, 10 points of strength, 7 points of agility. Description of the ability, after hitting a target with a powerful blow, he will receive an increase in the damage coefficient by 0, 1, and 1 star combination of points. Third ability is evasion. Conditions 10th level, 7 points of strength, and 10 points of agility. Skill description passively increases his evasion chance by 0 1. A fourth skill, mastering successive strikes. Conditions 10th level, strength 7 points, agility 10 points. Description of the skill, fast and accurate attacks increase, its additional damage cost 50 coins. Fang Tian says that he did not expect that training the skills would cost so much. He doubts that many beginners will be able to master all these skills. Luckily, he was prepared, so he had enough money. He wants to learn it all. The mentor laughs and snaps his fingers and says that he seems to be quite rich. He hopes that he can succeed in becoming an assassin. The system congratulates him for successfully mastering stealth, bone-chilling strikes, evasion mastery, and follow-up strikes. Killer, Stealth Skill Level 1, Bone Chilling Strike Level 1, Evasion Skill Level 1, Mastery of Successive Strikes Level 1. Fang Tian asks, is it really that simple? He turns to the mentor and asks when he can teach him real skills. The mentor laughed and asked, did he say real skills? His reaction shocked Fang Tian greatly. The mentor approached him and asked what then, in his opinion, are real skills. Fang Tian was scared by this, took out his dagger, and began to spin it in his hand. He strikes very quickly with the dagger while continuing to watch him. At the moment when he struck this blow, the mentor began to move with great speed and dodges this attack. He ended up behind him and Fang Tian, surprised by this, tries to stop after this blow. He doesn't think he even moved. He was so close to his mentor and still missed. The mentor laughs and says that he is really interesting. He must come and find him once he reaches level 50th. They left this magical space, and the mentor says that then maybe he will let him try it when the time comes. Fang Chan looks at him and asks what will he allow. The mentor waves him off with his hand and says that this is enough for today. 
Fang Tian leaves and thinks that the skills he learned before do not have a soul prefix. In other words, they are the same as regular pieces of equipment. Once he physically enters the game, it becomes ineffective. The soul attribute is probably the real focus of the game. Besides equipment, the only way to increase your strength is to learn soul skills. Fang Tian looks at the mentor and says that he is sure that he is trying to tell him something. Can he teach him soul skills? Although it doesn't matter. Even if these are ordinary skills and he masters it quickly, it will become easier for him to master soul skills later. He leaves, and after thanking him, says that when the time comes, he will come and find him. Fang Tian walks down the street and says that killing monsters up to level 50 by yourself is a waste of time. Is there any way to quickly reach level 50th? He remembers Tang Kian's hint that the fastest way to level up is for someone to endure it. The second fastest way is to complete tasks, the other way is to kill monsters. Fang Tian opens the list of friends in the system window and asks who he should ask to transfer the level to him. Tang Kian mentioned the competition with the chemistry class this morning. Luo Jianbing definitely went there too, they don't have time for that. He sees Shen Lulu's nickname and says sure, he can ask her. She is streaming at this time and says that her match will start in a while. They should definitely come and see it. Suddenly she received a letter that caught her attention and she turned away from the camera. She reads his name and asks why this annoying guy is looking for her again. Shen Lulu clicks on the letter and says that if he wants to explain why he suddenly logged out yesterday, then she can consider giving him advice. After all, he is a newbie. Fan Tian writes that he is now at the portal in the City of Ruins. She should come and help him with the level. His message surprised Shen Lulu greatly. She got very angry about this and says that she doesn't have time. This young lady is really busy. Fang Tian wrote her a short message in response. Shen Lulu looks at this message annoyed and asks what he means by writing this. She hopes that this guy is so thin-skinned that it only takes one word for him to hold a grudge. She tells the guild leader that he is the one who gave them the task. The guild leader says that the intelligence team has already analyzed this player's criteria. His potential is rated at rank S. Of all the residents of the district, he is the fourth with this level of potential. He doesn't care what method she uses, but she has to convince this guy to join their guild. Shen Lulu texts him, how about she go and find him after she finishes her match? She will finish at about 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Fang Tian wrote that he agreed to this. He looks around the street and says that now that he has found someone who will help him with this, he needs to get to know this city better. He goes to the tavern and says that his master mentioned that he could get all sorts of interesting information there. When he was still very young, his hooded master sat in front of him and told him that he could find guild members in every tavern. He can go there to perform tasks or obtain information, provided that he pays for it. Although, he must remember that they only want two things. First, they will try to raise the price as high as possible. Second, they will try to get information about him. Therefore, he needs to say as little as possible when dealing with members of the Assassin's Guild. Fan Chan enters a tavern where various customers are sitting at tables. He sits down at the bar and says that he will drink two glasses of Red Massacre. The bartender looked at him and said that he didn't remember meeting him before. Where did he hear this term? Fang Chen says that he needs to know where the four best leveling spots are, and he needs a way to level up quickly. How much is it? The bartender smiles and says that's interesting, he seems to know them very well. He put the red cocktail on the counter, and says that information about the area to upgrade costs three gold coins. If he wants to level up quickly, he has a task that gives a lot of experience. It costs 100 gold coins. This information and experience will be enough to reach the 55th level. Fang Tian agrees to this and raises his mug of cocktail. The system notifies that he has spent 100 gold coins. He received a message, a detailed map of the area surrounding the city of ruins. Great strength comes from hard work. He received an assignment, training to be a trainee assassin. The first task is to kill creatures above his level, 0 out of 9999. Second task, killings in the arena are 0 out of 100. The third task is to kill ordinary bosses above his level 0 out of 10. Fourth task, kill elite bosses 10 levels higher than him, 0 out of 1, reward for completing the task, a huge amount of experience points. The bartender says that he is a very flexible person, and it was a pleasure to work with him. Fan Chan says that by the way, he has something else. Does he have information about the sanctuary? 
The bartender licked his lips and said that information about the sanctuary would be very expensive. Fang Qian looks at him with a little disbelief and asks how much will it cost. The bartender raises his finger and says that he must pay a thousand gold coins for the most basic information. Fang Qian is very upset about this and says that it is too expensive and this is only for the most basic information. He doesn't need to know the basics. He turns around, getting ready to leave, and says that he has passed. He is grateful for his hospitality. After some time, Fang Tian came to a large and beautiful building with many people around it. He says that almost all cities have a central bank. According to the system notification, the key to the bank safe in the City of Ruins, it should be right here. John has mentioned in the past that Raphael's research was interrupted by some incident, so she kept all her research there. But what could possibly be written there? He walked into the spacious bank building. A bank employee approached him and said that she was pleased to meet him. What would he like help with? This bank charges a service fee when you deposit or withdraw money. However, they do not charge interest on any transactions. Fang Tian takes out the key and says that he would like to open the safe for this key. The employee was very surprised by this and says that she did not know that he was a member of VIP Gold. She points to a door nearby and asks him to go with her. They entered the elevator and went to the upper floors. The employee gets out of the elevator and asks him to follow her. They walk together to a large armored door where a man is sitting at a table. They approach the man sitting at the table and the employee handed him the key. A man examines a key using a monocle on his head. He said something to the employee and showed a thumbs up. She turns around and tells the client that he has already paid the lease for 300 years. Since he is a VIP gold member, they extended his contract for another 300 years. If he wants to return his saved things, then he needs to pay the remaining part of the rent, which is 1 in 200 gold coins. Fang Tian was very surprised by this and asked, Did she say 1 and 200 coins? Isn't that too much? The employee says that's true. If he does not collect his belongings by tomorrow, the 600-year lease will expire. According to the contract, these items will belong to their bank at that time. Fang Tian asks, is it a coincidence that the deadline is tomorrow? He thinks Jane mentioned that Raphael's research on the City of Sanctuaries is in this safe. He is not sure that this research is worth a thousand gold coins. This is probably a continuation of the S-Rank quest. This means that he will be able to increase his hidden Kai attribute and core attributes. He can't miss this chance. He turns to them and asks them to open it for him. The worker agrees and says that she will do it immediately. The man approaches the door to the vault and uses magic to lift the key and point it towards the keyhole. He inserted the key into the lock and began to open this door. They see a dark space behind this door. Fang Tian is about to enter this storage room and the worker says that his stored items will be sent to him using the inscription on the seal. He can press the red button on the wall if he needs any help. Fang Tian walks into a dark vault and feels something strange. In a very dark room, a magic circle was drawn, emitting a dim golden glow. In the center of this magic circle, a very old chest appears, which emits a bright glow. The system notifies that he has received an ancient chest, and this greatly surprises Fang Tian. He opens this chest and asks, Is this the chest armor left by that necromancer? He sees a book with the sign of the undead, and the system notifies that he has received research materials. Fang Tian sits on the floor and begins to read this book. Many cultures were created 3,000 years ago, at a time when humanity, elves, dwarves, and many other creatures lived together. Humanity has combined mechanization with alchemy to transform warriors with the highest level of faith into alchemical beings. This created a sanctuary civilization that had no equal. These advanced alchemical beings allowed the particularly devout to maintain their self-awareness even after transformation. Their strength increased by an incredible amount. As long as they had enough energy, they had endless vitality. Despite the long history of sanctuary civilization, for some unknown reason it disappeared. Like many other civilizations throughout history. During Raffala's exploration, she found clues that some members of the sanctuary still existed. She believed that the sanctuary had not actually disappeared, but had been sealed in another space-time dimension. To obtain the power of the alchemical golem and gain eternal life, she went far to the north in search of the remains of the sanctuary. Fang Tian closes the book and says that unfortunately, this place has been in ruins for a long time. Magical energy begins to appear around him, which he notices. This magical energy begins to gather into symbols, and this surprises him. 
The system notifies him that he has acquired a new soul skill, level 1 Elemental Alchemy. Description, using this ability, he can use all types of alchemical seals. The chance of success when creating items using alchemy increases by an additional 0.1%. He received a new soul skill, level 1 Gargoyle Creation. Description, creates low-level gargoyles from level 30 to 50. Recipe, 1 mercury, 3 woods, 6 stones, 10 high-level alchemical runes. Recovery time 1 hour, success rate 30%. Additional information, gargoyles consume energy when they are in an active state. They do not consume energy when in statue state. Soul abilities, alchemical control of the first level puppet. Description, this ability allows him to control three alchemical puppets at the same time. The level of alchemical creatures he summons is limited by his current level. Fang Tian asks if he just received three abilities from this ancient book at once. Next to the assassin skill line, a system window with an alchemist skill line also appeared. Fang Tian remembers something and says, Wait a minute, alchemy and gargoyles. Is this really the alchemist class of the dollmaker? When alchemy was popular at the height of sanctuary civilization, a new activity was born. An alchemist puppeteer, they fought by manipulating many different types of alchemical puppets. Alchemical dolls are immune to psychic magic, and they have the advantage of being highly resistant to both magical and physical damage. They are incredibly useful in battle. Gargoyles are creatures of only the third rank. They can fly and stay in the air excellently. Fang Tian looks at the closed book in his hands and thinks that he should do this as soon as possible. If he really could create low-level gargoyles, then 1200 gold coins would definitely be worth it. He put the book back in the chest. Fang Tian creates a flame in his hand and says that regarding these materials, it would be better if he destroyed it. He hits the chest with this fireball and it lights up. The system notifies that the task, the key, left by Raffala has been completed. He gets 5000 experience points. He increased his level by 4 and gained 12 attribute points. Fan Tian notices that in the ashes lies some kind of golden object of a strange shape. The system notifies that the next part of the S rank quest has been activated. A fragment of a mysterious alchemical rune. He received one alchemical rune fragment. Description, this item looks quite old, but it is in good condition. It seems that there is more than just one fragment in which he could find a secret. Fan Tian examines this item and wonders, is this a fragment of an alchemical rune? No information about the next step. Does he need to find out for himself? The system warns him that this item exceeds his rank, so it may be robbed by NPCs. He should be careful. His decision will affect the development of the game. Fang Tian thinks that he should forget about it. He needs to figure out how to create gargoyles first. If he can create enough gargoyles and command them to kill monsters for him, then he can increase his leveling speed. At the same time, Shen Lulu broadcasts live to 89,633 viewers and says that she is grateful to everyone for watching her match today. In that case, they will meet next time. She uses a teleport while standing in the arena, and because of this, a bright beam of light appears. The same beam of light appears on a street in the city center. Shen Lulu runs into the building, and the people who were already inside greet her. She sat down on a chair and, calling up the system window, said that she needed to find out where this guy was now. She texts him that she is finished. Where is he located? She will help him increase his level. Fang Tian says that they can do leveling later. He needs mercury, wood, stone, and high-level alchemical runes, a hundred of each. Shen Lulu was very surprised after reading his message and asked what he was even thinking about by asking this. Is he trying to take advantage of her? Wait. High-level alchemical runes. What high-level item is he trying to create? She asks why he needs all these materials. Fan Tian writes that these are materials for making things. Shen Lulu asks what he wants to create. He wrote to her that it was a secret. She gets angry and writes that she won't give him anything if he doesn't tell her. Fan Tian writes that then she will have to keep it a secret. He makes alchemical blueprints for low-level gargoyles. Shen Lulu is surprised by this and asks, how does this guy manage to get his hands on high-quality items so easily? Alchemical drawings are extremely rare items. She says with a sly look that if he can buy these drawings or finished products. She doesn't finish her sentence and laughs evilly. Fang Chan says that this gargoyle is expensive and it takes at least 10 gold to create it, but he has used up almost all of his gold. Shen Lulu writes that the other items are not a problem. 
It's just that high-level alchemical runes are really very valuable. She can't give it to him for free. She will give him each for one gold coin. Fang Tian says that he only has 98 gold left. Shen Lulu says he can get the rest for free. She will come immediately after she receives all the materials. They will meet later at the artisan's temple in the City of Ruins. Fang Tian feels strange and says that the skill description stated that the success rate is 30%. If he wants to test the fighting ability of this low-level gargoyle, then he must produce a lot to increase the probability of success. Some time later. Shen Lulu stands at the entrance to the artisan's temple and Fang Tian walks towards her. He walks up the stairs to her and asks why they are meeting here. She asks, doesn't he know? All players come here when they want to practice potion making, forging, rune making, and other non-combat skills. This placement increases his chances of success by 1 to 5%. Fang Tian accepts her exchange offer and says that this place requires them to pay quite a lot of money. He had already given her all his money. Shen Lulu walks inside the temple with her arms outstretched and says that she knows this. She spent 30 silver to rent a room for him. Not only that, but she gave him a lot of materials for free. He had better repay her kindness. Fang Chan asks how can he thank her. Shen Lulu smiles strangely and asks where did he get his alchemical drawings of this level? What level are they and can it be reused? Fang Tian says that he has already studied the blueprints and can no longer trade it. This news surprised Shen Lulu very much when she heard it. She turned away from him and sighed heavily. He is embarrassed by this and says that at least the gargoyles he creates should not be tied to him. Shen Lulu was very happy about this and asked, Will gargoyles be traded then? This is really great. She coughs into her hand and says what she means is that if the gargoyles are suitable, then he should create gargoyles for her guild in the future for free to repay them, and it should be free. Fang Tian says that if she can't control the puppets, then maybe they won't be able to control the gargoyles. Shen Lulu walks further down the corridor and says that's great, she's seen ability books before, so it's not hard to learn. They must hurry, because they are almost there. Fang Tian says this is wonderful. In any case, it has no disadvantages. He can also increase his gargoyle making skill. Shen Lulu opens one of the doors in the corridor and says that it is here. Together they enter a spacious but empty room, in which there is a cabinet and a table filled with various flasks for alchemy. Fang Tian drew a magic circle on the ground with different patterns and listed the ingredients, one mercury, three woods, six stones, and ten high-level alchemical runes. Shen Lulu stands not far from him, watching the process, and says that she doesn't know whether this child's success rate is high. Fan Tian directs his energy and the drawn patterns begin to glow, approaching the pile of materials lying in the center of the magic circle and it begins to smoke. Suddenly, there is a strong explosion and black smoke scatters throughout the room. They were surprised at this and covered their noses so as not to inhale the smoke. Shen Lulu tries to be friendly and says that he doesn't have to worry, it was his first try, he should keep trying. In fact, she is very upset about this and thinks that with every failure a lot of money is wasted. Fang Tian looks at what happened and thinks that soul ability, it seems that doing this randomly will not work. This is a valid point, he can use Kai to direct the flow of rune energy. He places his hands on the magic circle and uses his energy. Its energy begins to rise, moving through the magic circle, and the patterns begin to glow. He channels the energy from his body into the magic circle and looks up and thinks that he has done it. In front of him in the center of the magic circle lies a pile of ashes with some kind of sheet of paper. Shen Lulu is surprised by this and worried asks, did he really succeed? Fan Tian walked to the center of the magic circle and picked up a piece of paper that was lying in a pile of ashes. Turning over the sheet of paper, he saw that the drawing depicted a gargoyle. Shen Lulu asks, did he get anything good? Fang Tian turns to her and says that this is an alchemy card. In addition to abilities, the game also has card items that usually come with special abilities. Shen Lulu is very happy about this and says that he is very lucky. This is the summoning card. Fang Tian feels depressed and asks, however, how does he use the summon card? He is greatly surprised when he notices a system window warning that hidden player attributes have been detected. He can also try to activate the card using Kai. Once activated, he can only use his Kai to control the summoned creature. The summoned creature will also be a creature with the soul attribute. Fang Tian turns to Shen Lulu, 
who is excited that he was able to create a summon card and wonders if the summoned creature will exist with a soul attribute if he uses Kai. However, Uncle Hubard did tell him not to use it in front of other people. He looks at her and asks has she ever heard of Kai before. Shen Lulu is filled with very strong emotions and asks what it is. She had never heard of such a thing. Stop wasting time, he must show her the power of his gargoyles. Fang Tian looks at the card with a sad look and says that as expected, she doesn't know what Kai is, so she can forget about it. He will try to use intelligence points. His body is engulfed by very strong energy, and a magical dot appears on his forehead, surrounded by the same circle, and he directs his energy into the card. A bright column of energy appears in front of them, which emits a bright light, from which they cover themselves with their hands. This energy disappears, and they see a large gargoyle with steel horns. In the system window, it is written that this creature is a gargoyle of the third rank, level 37. Power 93 points, agility 102 points, strength 70 points, life 1 in 320 points. Abilities, bite, uses bite to attack in the air, increases attack speed by 100% and attack damage by 30%. Petrification, after using this ability, the gargoyle's physical defense increases by 100% and magical defense increases by 200%. The gargoyle becomes immune to all spells of the third rank or lower, the regeneration rate is increased by 100%, and energy consumption is also reduced. Passive abilities, group attack, the attributes of each gargoyle increase by 1% for every 300 gargoyles, the maximum value is 100%. Hardened body, gargoyles are made of hard stone. This provides an additional increase in physical durability by 10% and magical durability by 20%. Depending on the player's level, the tallest gargoyles they can control are level 14. Shen Lulu created a magic sign in front of her eye and looks at this gargoyle, and says that it is a real gem. Although a level 37 gargoyle itself is not that powerful, but as its alchemy ability increases, the level of gargoyles produced will also increase. They can also fight in the air. So, if there was a team of gargoyles, they would definitely dominate the skies. She creates a camera and says that she needs to quickly send a photo to the guild to allow the guild leader and them to analyze the possibility of creating a gargoyle team. She turns to Fang Tian and says that this child is an unexplored gold mine. He says that this gargoyle doesn't seem to be that good, although his ability to create gargoyles has increased from level 1 to level 2, so his success rate has increased a bit. He should hurry up and use the rest of the materials to make more. Some time later. They walk down the street while gargoyles fly after them, and Shen Lulu says that she did not expect that he was so good at alchemy. Fang Tian turns to the gargoyle and says that it is too conspicuous. He did not expect that he would not be able to save this gargoyle after summoning it. Moving it also requires energy. From that point of view, it really wasn't worth it. A guy comes up to him and says that he has never seen this pet with him before. Where did he get it from, and is he selling it? Shen Lulu says that this is a reward for completing the task. As for the rest, this is the secret of her guild. She apologizes for not being able to tell him the rest. She turns around and asks what will they do now. Fang Tian says that now she must help him level up. He has a task to kill 9999 monsters, she must help him with this task. Shen Lulu asks which place is best for leveling up. In magic, once the player is outside the novice village, killing monsters 10 levels below the player incurs experience penalties. The damage from the attack is too low. If he fails to deal with the monster, they can easily die, since there is no tank among them. This game also has a harsh punishment system, so they can't take too many risks. Fang Tian asks if she has any area of effect abilities that can reduce a monster's life points until there is very little left, to the point where he can kill those monsters with one hit. Thus, all experience points will go to him. Shen Lulu says that as long as he deals the killing blow, the experience points will go to him. She has the ability Ring of Holy Light, which can deal light damage to creatures within range. Fang Tian says that in this case, they should leave. Shen Lulu follows him and asks where are they going. He continues walking and says they are going beyond the level. After some time they came to a lost valley. A large number of lizard monsters were crowded in this place. Shen Lulu was very surprised to see this and said that he dared to bring her here. He will tell him right now that these desert lizards have high resistance and are also poisonous. A priest like her helping him level up here wouldn't be very effective. 
Fang Tian calmly says that the Lost Valley is the habitat of poisonous lizards. Not only do they have 20% resistance to magical attacks. If they hit the player, the player's movement speed will also be reduced by 20%. Their attack speed will be reduced by 40%, and the player will be poisoned for 3 seconds. Shen Lulu is embarrassed by this and asks how does he know so much. Fang Tian says that he studied them in advance. Poisonous lizards do not live long, and their tails come at a high price. Moreover, they can be killed quickly, which can save a lot of time. What's important is that the map that the Assassin's Guild bartender Duke gave him indicated that there was a chance of finding fragments of the desert treasure map. As long as he can collect 15 desert treasure map fragments, he will be able to find the treasure hidden in the depths of the valley. She needs to focus on healing, and he will go and see how strong the poisonous lizards are. He jumps off the cliff he was standing on. Shen Lulu is worried about this idiot and says that he should not just attack. Fang Tian doesn't listen to her and continues to fly towards those monsters. At the moment of flight, he activates his stealth skill and his body becomes transparent. Shen Lulu was surprised by this and rubbed her eyes and asked, shouldn't he use stealth when standing still? Why does he use stealth while moving? The monsters stand still and look around. Fang Tian lands on one of these monsters and hits him from behind and deals a critical hit for 830 damage. He stabs another monster in the back and the lizard coughs up blood. He sticks his dagger out of the monster's body and says that although the Duke card was expensive, it was worth it. The indication of the weak point of the venomous desert lizards was, after all, correct. The killing point for venomous desert lizards is right along that dotted red line. Fang Chan is surprised to see the lizard open its mouth to attack. He jumps and dodges the attack with a cloud of poisonous smoke that the lizard released through his mouth. Fang Chan stabs the monster in the back with a dagger and deals a critical blow for 620 damage. He removes the blood from his dagger with a wave of his hand and says that level 32 wild monsters are not much different from ordinary monsters. Shen Lulu comes down from the cliff and thinks this guy is amazing he managed to kill the poisonous desert lizards with two hits, even though they are 20 levels above him. Does that mean everything will be like last time? Is he just here for fun? Fang Tian asks her how much damage does her divine punishment cause each time. Shen Lulu says it does about 700 damage and about 1000 damage if it's a critical hit. Fang Tian looks at the monster's body lying on the ground and thinks that only then did he understand how the poisonous desert lizards attack. Their movement speed is not that fast, and they mostly only have two simple attack methods, attack with front paws and poisonous attacks. He says that poisonous desert lizards have about 1 in 200 health points. She must attack from afar, which is ideal since he can kill them after she lures them to him. Shen Lulu says that this means that each of his attacks should not deal less than 500 points of damage. Each attack should kill these monsters in one hit. Is he sure he's not messing with her? Fang Tian looks at the system window and says that she should trust him. With his passive ability of mastering successive hits, the more critical hits he deals, the higher his damage. So that when he gave it his all, she would be completely safe. Shen Lulu smiles at him and agrees with him. Fang Tian runs towards the monsters, holding a dagger in his hand and says that then they should move on. Shen Lulu stands behind him and uses the Divine Punishment spell. Using this spell, she caused a large amount of damage to several monsters. Fang Tian runs up to these monsters very quickly and deals critical hits to each of these monsters. Shen Lulu looks at him from afar and wonders, his critical hit rate is 100%, how exactly does he do it? This guy is too scary. If this were a team fight, this guy would definitely be a reliable teammate. The guild leader called her and she was surprised by this. Fang Tian turns to him and asks why did she stop? Shen Lulu says that someone is calling her in private. He must go and collect the drops from the monsters while she regains her concentration. Fang Tian looks at the gargoyle and thinks that he has already spent a lot of gold on creating gargoyles. By selling all those lizard tails, he can make some more money. The system notifies that the player has received many desert lizard tails and whole desert lizard skins. Fang Tian notices something in his inventory and asks what it is. He clicks on the map in his inventory, and the system notifies that this is a fragment of a treasure map of a desert valley. It is tied to his soul and cannot be exchanged. The remaining time is 24 hours. He needs 50 treasure map fragments to piece together the complete treasure map. Fang Chan asks if this is the treasure map shown on the map Duke gave him. 
Shen Lulu uses an earpiece and microphone to ask the guild leader, has he already made a decision? He agrees and says that the intelligence team has already analyzed the materials regarding the gargoyles that she sent. They have already made an internal decision. They will have to create an army of gargoyles. Although the level of gargoyles is quite low, if their numbers are huge, then this can compensate for this. Once they gain control of the heavens, the power of their guild will increase significantly. Not only will they be able to claim the first kill of a level 60 instance on the entire server, but they will even be able to found their own guild city, becoming the ruling guild. So, she should make every effort to win over Fang Tian and try to persuade him to join their guild. Only if he is in the same boat as them will they be able to ensure smooth implementation. He doesn't finish and Shen Lulu says that she promises to complete the mission. She ended the call and thought about becoming the ruling guild and says that the guild leader has already come very far. She goes to Fang Tian and thinks that she never thought that a 10th level newcomer would be able to give the star guild the opportunity to come to power. He notices her and asks if she finished. Shen Lulu thinks that he is currently capable of fighting level 30 monsters alone. What would he be capable of at level 60? She needed to help this guy reach level 60 quickly. When the time comes, it will definitely be of great help in clearing a level 60 instance. Fang Tian looks at her blankly and asks why she is looking at him like that. Shen Lulu says that this is nonsense. Has he finished gathering the ingredients? If he is finished, then they can continue pumping. Fang Tian stands among the corpses of the lizards he killed and says that when using abilities not related to the soul, his mastery of these abilities with every use, whether he hits or misses. However, in this they differ from the faculties of the soul. A system window appears in front of him, and a notification that Tang Kian has sent a voice call request. Fang Tian answered the call, and she immediately asked loudly in surprise, is he already at level 20? He says that someone is helping him, so he is leveling up pretty quickly. Tang Kian says she's impressed, but he should stop pumping for now. He must quickly log out and come to dinner. Fang Chen agrees and says that he is on his way. He ends the call and says he needs to go to dinner. Will she come too? Shen Lulu says that she thought he was an avid gambler. So it turns out that he also needs to eat. Does he want to continue after dinner? Fang Tian says that the task is not finished yet, so of course they will continue. Shen Lulu agrees and says that she is looking forward to meeting him at 18.30. Fang Tian says that he almost forgot to say something. Does she know what treasure will be found when he collects all the pieces of the treasure map? Shen Lulu uses the scroll to create a bright pillar of magical energy and says what about this? He shouldn't get too carried away with it. The drop rate of treasure map fragments decreases as he collects more fragments. Once the time limit expires, all fragments collected by him will be lost. Many people have tried before but without success. No one has tried it since then. Feng Chan looks at the map fragment and asks, in other words, no one knows what can be obtained by collecting all the treasure map fragments. Some time later, he comes out of his room and Tang Kian, noticing him, says that he should come here and eat. She sat down at the table and said that they had abused the chemist team again. Fang Chen is about to eat and says they are incredible. Tang Kian says with a smug expression that of course it is. She will tell him this. The vice president of their school's eSports club went to an internet cafe and watched the game next to her. He must guess why she appeared in this cafe. Fang Tian thinks about this and asks why. Tang Kian says that many high school students in the club have graduated this year, Kin Yin must be recruiting new people, and he must be one of the potential candidates. Next week, there will be a competition at their school to recruit cyber athletes. If there is one, they will have two advanced players in their physics class. Fang Tian says that he will decide this later, maybe something will come up. Tang Kian eats a bowl of rice very quickly using chopsticks. Having eaten all the rice, she put this plate on the table. She quickly got up from the table and said that she would not be able to accompany him for several days because she needed to practice. Fang Tian says that he understood her. He continues to eat leisurely and thinks that the sports club feels like fun, but he'll do that later. Cleaning up after himself, massaging his shoulder, thinks he's a little tense, seems like getting into the game gives him little to no exercise. There is still a little time left, he must go out and play sports, he must keep his body in shape. Some time later, Fang Tian changed his clothes and went out into the street and began to run. He stopped and was running in place when he noticed a boy who approached him. 
The boy with the lollipop hands him a note and says that someone asked him to give this to him. Fang Chan is surprised by this and asks should he give it to him. On a piece of paper, it is written, Esports Club, Dragon 3. He asks if he can tell him who gave him that note. The boy says that a strange man gave it to him and said that he should give it to him and then ran away. The boy runs away from him and Fang Chan, looking at the note, thinks that he should try to join this competition and see who this Dragon 3 is. Some time later. He's back in the game and in the spot he left last time. Shen Lulu notices him and says that this time he came on time. Fang Tian goes to her and says that they should start. She says that he should wait. She forgot to tell him earlier that every week until the end of the last day, which is today, there is an open broadcast. Fang Tian asks what does she mean by open broadcast? Does that mean she can't help him? Shen Lulu says that it looks like he didn't see the broadcast of the game. Everything they do is visible on the screen. Anyone can see it. Fang Tian says that he has understood this, then it is not a problem. Shen Lulu wonders, he, this is the treasure that she found, but with the open broadcast, any guild can grab him, what should she do? Fang Tian looks at her without understanding what is happening and asks, what is this? Shen Lulu wonders, why don't she try and see if he wants to join the guild? She asks if he will join their star guild. If she was seen helping someone outside the guild, she would be labeled as shameless. There are many benefits to joining their guild. Fang Tian thinks that although he doesn't know what the guild does, leveling up alone is too slow, so this could help him. The system notifies that the hunt for 9999 monsters of a higher level, he killed 1088 monsters. Shen Lulu says that a guild is an organization where people with common interests can gather, he can also make new friends. Fang Tian asks if he wants to join their guild, what should he do? Shen Lulu was very surprised and happy about this and thinks that he almost agreed. She's a real genius. She coughs, trying to contain her joy, and says that usually they need to evaluate each new recruit, but she knows about his strengths, so she will give a recommendation to the guild. A system window appears in front of Fang Chan, in which it is written that Shen Lulu wants to invite him to the Star Guild. He agreed, and the system notifies that he has joined the 4th level Star Guild. Characteristics of the guild, peaceful and friendly, Zhang territory. Many messages of congratulations appear in front of him, and this greatly embarrassed Fang Tian. The system asks if he wants to turn off notifications. He immediately clicks the icon to turn off notifications. He asks if they can start now. Shen Lulu creates a camera using the system and says that he should come here, closer to her. He approached her, and she, having greeted everyone, said her name and said that she was pleased to see them again. She points to Fang Tian and says that this is the new guild member, and today they will play together. Viewers ask in the chat, is this newcomer so lucky? Did they recruit new people? He also wanted to join the guild. He would love to be in his place. Is he on a mission with Shen Lulu? Why would she bring a newcomer to the Lost Valley? Maybe he is strong? He supports them, guys. Shen Lulu takes his staff and casts the Holy Retribution spell. With this spell, she caused a lot of damage to several lizards standing not far from her. Viewers write that they are not dead yet. Agrees and says they should look at it. Someone should call the police. These lizards are not dead. She should run away faster. A Fan Tian runs very quickly past these lizards and defeats these monsters with blows of his dagger. Viewers write that they should look at this new guy. What does he do? Most likely, he is a murderer. This newbie isn't too bad. It looks like she can control two attributes. Shen Lulu says that this guy is really strong. All his attacks were not only strong, but they were also critical hits. Fan Tian takes out his dagger from the body of the lizard he killed. Suddenly the ground begins to shake, and he was very surprised when he noticed it. His body begins to shake due to this earthquake. He turns around and calls Shen Lulu. She turns to him and asks if he wants to rest. She begins to fall and screams in surprise. Fang Tian quickly ran over and caught her. Viewers write that he should let his goddess go. What is going on? This is the perfect place to meet girls. He must keep his dirty hands off her. They have to kill this freak. Suddenly a huge scorpion came out of the ground, and this greatly surprised the viewers of this broadcast. They write that they should look at it. The boss in this location has appeared again. Shen Lulu says that this is a level 30 boss, a poisonous scorpion, it takes a level 40 team of 5 people to defeat it. Fang Tian asks that viewers write that they are unlucky with the boss being revived. They should be optimistic about Shen Lulu. They don't have to worry about her because he's already called for help. 
they should just wait for help. She is strong and invincible. Fang Chan says there is nothing more he can do, she should let him try to kill it. Shen Lulu asks if they should try this. Has he gone crazy? Just because there are two of them, they will definitely not be the Desert Scorpion's opponents. Fang Tian says that by defeating a boss level monster, they will definitely receive many rewards. Since there will be no real death here, there is nothing terrible about it. He rushes to attack this monster. Shen Lulu tries to stop him and calls his name. Viewers write that this guy is evil. The presenter is now the boss. He's a strong guy. She says that since they're all in, she can't hold back. Having said this, she continues to heal. Viewers write that they love her. It does not make sense. Why doesn't the boss appear when he spawns monsters? He said that those who cannot be touched must have bad character. Fang Tian runs towards the boss and thinks that the desert poisonous scorpion is surrounded by a hard shell, showing a high degree of protection. If he wants to inflict many critical hits, then he must constantly accumulate combo points. He dodges the boss's attack and the sting sticks into the ground next to him. Immediately afterwards, Fang Tian quickly stabbed the boss's sting with his dagger. He jumps back and thinks that in the information that Duke gave him there is no such creature, he must find the weak point of the desert scorpion as quickly as possible. He looks at the sharp sting of this huge scorpion. Shen Lulu uses the Shadow World skill, thorn, and pierces the scorpion's body in several places. Purple energy hovers next to her staff, and she says that the desert scorpion's power lies in its tail and belly. Fang Tian slides under the belly and says that this is good. He swings a dagger while lying on the ground, under the belly of a scorpion. He pierces the scorpion's belly with his dagger and deals a critical hit for 618 damage. Shen Lulu calls him and says that the control time is only 3 seconds. Fang Tian, hearing this, begins to strike many times, causing critical damage. Viewers say that he continuously scores critical hits on this boss. This killer is quite good. Does this class really have that much damage? Shen Lulu was surprised to see this and wondered what a terrible result. Is he really just a beginner? During these three seconds that she kept the boss under control, Fang Tian was able to inflict a lot of damage to this monster. The scorpion fell to the ground and, covering itself with its claws, began to restore its health points. Shen Lulu says that the desert poison scorpion is hiding its own weaknesses and their damage is unlikely to be as high as before. If this continues, the amount of blood finally destroyed will slowly increase. Fang Tian says that when he didn't get a critical hit, the performance was too low and he had to find a way to increase the performance. By the way, don't they have gargoyles? Shen Lulu is embarrassed by this and tries to tell him something. Fang Tian does not listen to her and takes out several cards that emit a glow. Using these cards, he summons several gargoyles that fly around him. The audience is surprised by this and asks what is this? What did he just do? Could he be a summoner? They should look at this, this thing can fly. Is it really possible that his class is not an assassin, but a summoner? Who is he? This is Alchemy Puppet Master. They must attack the desert scorpion together. His teacher had never heard of it. The gargoyles attack the scorpion from different directions, and someone says that the air units are really amazing. The desert scorpion can only take beatings from them. Suddenly, the scorpion jumps and freezes in the air. Fang Tian runs very quickly towards this monster, swinging his dagger. He runs under the boss's belly and deals many critical hits. Viewers look at it and write that it is worthy of being a flying creature it. This alchemist is really good. There are still 108 points of blood left in there. Shen Lulu calls Fang Tian and says that he should be careful. It wants to zoom in. He begins to be pulled into the quicksand, and the system notifies him that he must pay attention. He enters the center of the dust accumulation. His movement speed is reduced by 3 points, and his maximum number of health points decreases by 58 with every second. Small scorpions, similar to the boss, begin to crawl out of the sand. Shen Lulu says that this is not good. With so many little poisonous scorpions, none of them have targeting skills. The system notifies you that you need to be careful. If you sit in the dust, your movement speed will drop to zero points. Emergency warning, under the influence of hand dust, magic damage, and attack range are reduced by 50%. The audience writes many different messages as Fang Tian fights the little scorpions while wielding his dagger. He thinks the master said that the more dangerous he becomes, the calmer he will be. It seems that when a poisonous scorpion casts a spell, that is when its resistance becomes strongest. 
he jumps out of the quicksand and jumps high towards the boss. Having jumped to the belly of the monster, he thrusts his dagger into it, dealing a critical blow and hanging on it. It slides down, slicing the monster's body. Viewers write that they should watch what is happening. The volume of poisonous blood drops very quickly. What is happening is simply amazing. Everything turned out to be the opposite. Fang Chen continues to slide down, making a very long cut with his dagger across the scorpion's body. Shen Lulu is very surprised by what happened and says that it turned out that he was able to defeat this boss. The system notifies several times that his level has been increased and he receives skill points. Viewers write that he must collect the treasure. It's time to check its characteristics. He feels like nothing happened. Shen Lulu asks what happened to him from the boss. Many system windows appear in front of them, in which it is written that he received equipment, desert running boots of the 30th level, agility 10 points. Level 30 round scorpion shield, strength 20 points, power 30 points. A fragment of a desert treasure map. Heroic toxin. Description, 10% chance of poisoning the enemy, 200 points of poison damage, while at the same time causing the enemy to enter a dizzy state for one second. Powerful soul. Description, this is what remains after the death of a powerful being. Alchemists and necromancers will need these souls. Unknown key. Description, this key looks ancient, and there seems to be a mysterious power flowing through it. Why this key? Warning, it will lose its effect after 24 hours. The player's team successfully killed a level 30 boss, and the guild's prestige increased by 20 points. Shen Lulu says that this can be considered as an ordinary level 40 or 50 equipment. She just doesn't know what the key and the powerful soul are doing. Fang Tian says that this equipment has certain level requirements, he doesn't need it at all. Besides this, others must be sold someday. He has collected all the fragments of the treasure map in this valley, but there is no new clue in the system. Does she know how to do it? Shen Lulu was surprised by this and asked if he really collected it. He is too bad and should let her look. Viewers write that this treasure map is amazing, it must be alchemy, they should go to the alchemy tree guild in the city to find someone to ask. They can go to the Alch Mywood Guild in town to find someone to ask. They can look through a magnifying glass. There should be a mark there. Fang Tian says that there is no symbol here, and the cutting edge is exactly the same. How to spell it out. Uncle Hubbard mentioned that there was a kind of treasure map that was marked, and only by reading the mark could one see it. Could this be something like a treasure map? Fang Tian uses his energy and created a magic point with a circle on his forehead. He opens his eyes and looks at the fragments of the map and his body radiates energy. He starts rearranging pieces of the map, trying to piece it together. Doing this, he thinks that of course he can see through this that there is a certain pattern on each product. He needs to put it together. He feels intense pain and closes his eyes, clenching his teeth in pain. Fang Tian thinks that his reading consumption exceeds his workload, and he should lay out the treasure map as soon as possible. He was able to put the map in the correct order, and the system notifies that he has successfully collected the treasure map. Shen Lulu was surprised to see this, and asked how he was able to fold this treasure map. The map begins to come together from a bunch of fragments and emit bright light. The system notifies that the player has initiated a search for the treasure map. He has the right to enter the dungeon, which will disappear after three hours. Immediately after this, fragments of the map began to fly around them, and a staircase leading underground appeared on the floor. The audience is surprised by what happened and asks, is this a treasure map? Did he manage to unlock the treasure map? The last guild that tried to collect it failed. Fang Tian looks at the passage underground and asks, is it sealed in the ground? Shen Lulu says that she has never seen such a strange quest before. Viewers write that they should go and see what this treasure is. They wish them luck. Fang Tian felt sick, sweat ran down his face, and he fell to the ground due to fatigue. Shen Lulu picked him up and asked what was wrong with him. He sat down on the ground and said that he was fine, and that he was fine. He thinks that he can no longer use his energy. If he continues to spend too much, it could endanger his life. Shen Lulu looks at the passage that appeared next to them and asks, Will they go there? If a monster that is stronger than the desert scorpion appears, then it would be better for them to leave. Fang Tian says that this place has a time limit, they should go and check. They left the gargoyles standing there and went inside. They go down a long staircase and Shen Lulu says that this cave is so deep that it is not known when they will arrive. Viewers write that she shouldn't worry. This place is amazing. 
They heard a faint sound and Fang Chan stopped, and Shen Lulu crashed into his back. She looks at him and asks what's going on. He continues to listen to the sounds and asks her to be quieter. A large rat with red eyes runs towards them. Fang Chan was not taken aback, and throwing his dagger, he killed this monster. He looks at the body of the rat in which his dagger is stuck, and says that fortunately it was just a rat, with a very low level. He goes further and says that cave rats have personality and a strong sense of territoriality. They continue to move on, and the audience writes that it turns out that there is such a place in this game. This place is simply gigantic, he must be careful, you never know what can happen. What are these things in this place? Fang Chan asks, has she seen this before? Shen Lulu says that she has never been to such a place, and this is the first time she has seen it. She looks at one of these objects standing in the cave and wonders why, when she is with him, she keeps encountering strange things. Fang Chan examines it and thinks that these coffins were made of some special material. Are these patterns on the coffins of formation, or just ordinary decoration? Shen Lulu turns to him and asks why don't he open it and take a look. Does he want to try it? Fang Chan turns to her and says that in this mode, the worst outcome is the death of the player character, who can be resurrected after three days, so he will try. At the same moment, some kind of gas begins to come out of the coffins. Shen Lulu notices this and says that he should move back. The system notifies that the player has launched a special task. The name of the task is Closed Coffins. Description, through a treasure map, he found three coffins that stand in front of him. Red notifications warn the system that an error has been detected. Game anomalies, automatic recovery starts. Recovery failed, a dangerous anomaly was detected in the game. The abnormal level is assessed. Shen Lulu noticed these alerts and asks what is going on here. What anomalies are we talking about? Fang Chan says there is something wrong with this coffin. They should be careful. Suddenly the three coffins rose and stood upright. The coffin lids fell off and inside each of them were mummies. Shen Lulu was surprised to see them and asked what was going on. These are mummies. Fan Chan says that mummies are an undead combat unit. They have a lot of power in their bodies and are extremely difficult to defeat. While they are waking up, at this moment they are most vulnerable, they must attack them now. After these words, he immediately rushed to attack, and Shen Lulu began to use her spell. She directs a beam of energy using the Divine Punishment spell. At the moment when the shot of her magical energy almost hit the mummy, the monster came to its senses and noticed this attack. The mummy stopped this attack by putting out her hand and grabbing the magical energy. The monster squeezed his hand and dispelled this energy. Shen Lulu was very surprised by this and asked how is this possible? What kind of monster is this? Did he actually suppress her attack? A Fang Tian at this moment approached one of the mummies using stealth and swung his dagger, about to stab him with the dagger. Suddenly this mummy began to move and turn towards him, despite the skill of stealth. Fang Tian was very surprised when he noticed this strange behavior of the monster. He jumped to the side, not taking any risks, and said that they should be careful, because these mummies can see through his stealth skill that they are very strong. One of the mummies says it looks like they came from outside. His eyes glow red, and he asks, are they strangers? At the same time in T-27, Command Sector. A girl with a mug approaches the commander and says that he has not slept for several days and nights. Why shouldn't he rest? Tang Ran took this mug and says that they can't let their guard down. They can't let the desert scorpion incident happen again. The girl says that, however, there have been no situations recently. At the same moment, the system notifies that a level of danger has appeared. Location of the Lost Valley, coordinates, A2030s, 2109. This surprised them very much and Tang Ran says that this is a common place for leveling up. How could an abnormal reaction suddenly appear there? They must send someone there immediately. At the same time. Shen Lulu says that NPCs with high intelligence tend to view all players as outsiders. Fang Tian says that it looks like this mummy is one of those NPCs. She says they should be careful because they are strong. The mummy reaches out and asks if they came in from outside, that means they have the key to open their chains, right? The mummy walks towards them and Fang Chan notices the chains on the legs of this mummy. He wonders, did he say they need a key? He takes the key out of his inventory and asks, is he talking about this? The mummy begins to reach out to him, but his body is stopped by the chains and he says that this is exactly the key, he must give it to him. He can give him any power or wealth if he gives it to him. He may even be his servant. 
Shen Lulu was surprised by this, and thinks that if someone hired a high-level NPC, his strength would definitely skyrocket. She turns to Fong Tian and says that he should give him the key and make him a servant. If this is true, then he will be able to raise levels even faster. He looks at the mummy and says that he doesn't trust him. He will give him the key if he proves it to him by taking a soul oath. The mummy says that it turns out he is smart. As soon as the soul oath is signed, not only will he not be able to kill him, but his life will be in his hands. He directs dark energy to the earth and says that to get the key, he has many more ways. Fang Tian notices this strange energy and it greatly surprised her. He jumped and dodged the magical energy that came towards him along the ground. He lands on the ground and says that he knew this would happen. Shen Lulu's legs were bound by this magical energy, and she asks what kind of skill is this? The system warns that the player is currently in absolute imprisonment, which cannot be dispelled. Fang Tian goes to her and asks if she is okay. Shen Lulu says that the game warned her that she is imprisoned, she cannot move, and the spell will not be dispelled. Fang Tian was surprised by this and thinks that this spell contained Kai and normal spells were ineffective against it. Luckily, the iron chains are holding him back, so he can't get close to them. He is too weak to defeat these mummies. What should he do? The mummy points his finger and says that he suddenly came up with an interesting deal. She's his companion, isn't she? How about trading a companion's life for a key? Shen Lulu says that he should not agree to this. This monster is deceiving him. He is now trapped and will not be able to harm him. The mummy asks if she thinks it is like that. He beckons her with his finger and asks, why don't they check it out? Magical energy begins to move through Shen Lulu's body. This surprises her, and she asks what is happening again. Magical energy has bound most of her body, and the mummy asks how he can do this. He has little time left. Will he choose her life or the key? Shen Lulu endures the pain and says that he should leave her. In the worst case, they will die and will not be able to enter the game for several days. A spirit similar to her appears behind her, and the mummy, laughing, says that people think too simply. He knows that they have a special method to make the soul leave the body temporarily, so he simply blocked her soul. If she dies now, her soul will never return to her body. They must understand the consequences of this. Fang Tian stood between them and said that he agrees, but first he must let her go, then he will give him the key. The mummy reaches out to him and says that first he must give up the key, and then he will let them go. Fang Tian says that there is only one key, if she dies, then he will never get it. The mummy thinks about this and says that he is not going to fight with strangers. He just needs the key. He must keep his promise. The energy of this monster dissipated and Shen Lulu fell to the ground, exhausted. Fang Tian immediately ran to her side to help her up. He lifts her up and she asks if he really wants to make a deal. He says that they cannot be sure that he will not attack them. They must leave quickly. The mummy looks at them and says that now he must give him the key. Fang Tian tosses the key, spinning it, and says that he must catch it. An arrow flew next to him, which greatly surprised him, and someone behind him says that he should not give up. The arrow hit the mummy, and a strong explosion occurred as a result of this shot. Fang Tian looks around and wonders, was it an archer? He notices an archer standing not far from him and wonders when he appeared there. He can't believe he didn't notice him. He is surprised and wonders if he really killed this monster. He notices a man standing on the coffin with two daggers and realizes that he is a murderer. What are they? The killer strikes with his daggers and Fang Tian wonders who these people are. The mummy noticed this attack and was able to stop these blows with his hands. The monster threw this killer several meters away. Fang Tian looks at this and thinks that it is a pity that at the very end of the attack he released his own aura. This gave the enemy the opportunity to react. He notices a heavily armored knight with a shield and thinks that this is a violent clash, however, they still have a warrior. The knight and warrior attack the mummy at the same time, but their attacks are blocked by a magical barrier. A girl in military uniform and glasses came to this cave and told Fang Tian that he should take her with him and leave here immediately. She takes off her glasses and says that she recommends not telling anyone about what happened here today. Do they understand this? Fang Tian says that he understands this very well. The mummy says that he should not leave here. It is very difficult to find a person who can remove the seal with a key. He must stop. He can give him the most ancient power. Fang Tian leaves and says that with this kind of power, he can get it himself. The mummy screams loudly and it knocks back the people who attacked him. Fang Tian leaves, taking Shen Lulu away and leaving a group of players to fight the mummy. 
They got out of his dungeon together and moved on. He laid her on the ground and thinks that he does not understand at all how the skills of this mummy affected her. He turns around and thinks that they also know how to control the mind, and they cope with such things better than the current one. Sometime later. Fang Tian walks down the hallway of his school, where several students are standing. Liu Jianbing runs to him and says that yesterday he received an autographed photo from Shen Lulu. Isn't this wonderful? Fang Tian turns to him and thinks that after she woke up yesterday, they all passed out, and he doesn't know what happened then. Liu Jianbing hugged him and said that he shouldn't be so upset. Next time he will ask for an autograph for him too. By the way, the Esports Competition Club has started recruiting new members, and they should go there. They can't miss out on such fun. They lined up for the person sitting at the table and Fang Tian asks, Isn't this a basketball court? Why are there so many people here? Liu Jianbing says that the purpose of esports is high school competitions held by the major leagues, and the purpose of recruitment is to select more high-quality players with greater talent. The school attaches great importance to this and, in particular, contributes to the creation by dedicating the school's largest indoor basketball court for tryouts. Tang Kayan walks towards them, holding two sheets of paper in his hands, and tells Fang Chan that she has finally found him. She handed over these two sheets of paper and asked why is he so slow. Registration has already started. They should hurry up. Luo Jianbing looks at the piece of paper and says that he heard that the number of a sports club newcomers has doubled this year. This time they can see a cool show. Feng Chan asks, isn't there a person named Long San in the sports club? Tang Kain says that she has never heard of such a thing. Who told him this? Is he famous? He looks at them in surprise and says that it doesn't matter. Maybe he remembered the name wrong. They continued talking to each other while Fang Tian looked for something in his pocket. He takes out the note and thinks that there is no such person in the club who gave him the message. What should he do then? Shimao, a middle-aged man, sits on the podium watching the selection and tells the captain that there are only three masters who can run the complete freedom mode. It's not that bad, almost. Kin Yin says that he should not let her take matters into her own hands as a mentor. Although Zhu Yang has some natural talents, his style is hot and willful, and he never comes to participate in club activities. It's just some kind of childish stubbornness. Many of the team members graduated this year, and the team is far from being fully completed, and it seems that they are not very keen on making it to the regional quarterfinals this time. Shimao points to the document in his hand and asks who is this Fang Tian, and why is he being singled out so much? Kin Yin says that he is a newcomer who transferred to their middle school this year. She heard from Liu, he from the team that she and Fang Tian had a one-on-one -on -one match. In his estimation, this guy should be a player capable of using free mode. Shimao says that if this is true, then they will have four players in a completely free mode. She doesn't have to talk about it anymore. Reaching the quarterfinals will be a piece of cake. Or does she still think the team is weak? King Yin turned to the participants and said that there is more than one person in the team. After all, this is a team competition. Zhu Yang at least will not be able to influence the entire pace of the team so easily. As for Fang Tian, although she doesn't know his skills, she has heard that he is not of high rank and is also a cold-blooded killer. She's not particularly optimistic. Shimao says that they don't yet know how valuable he is alone or as a team. The beginners are not very strong now, but they can grow these sprouts into mighty trees. Does she disagree with this? He looks at Fang Tian and says that the school has put in a lot of effort so that they can participate in the event, and they hope that they will not let them down and will be able to complete the team. There's nothing wrong with that. She shouldn't think too much about it. They'll see everything fine later. The student conducting the selection asks Fang Jian, is he the same powerful newcomer that Liu he spoke about? He greets him. His name is Mu Rong. He is a senior in their school. Fang Tian greeted him back. Mu Rong looks at the piece of paper that says he is from the Star Guild and thinks that it is a big guild and the entry requirements are quite high. This guy looks ordinary. He didn't expect that he would become a member of this guild at level 20. There seems to be something truly extraordinary here. He asks, he heard that he transferred to this school this year, is it true? Has he not been involved in social activities before? Fang Tian says he didn't do it. Mu Rong says that then he should let him talk about it briefly. The main goal of their club is not leveling up or getting good equipment. They focus on leveling up personal skills through PvP between club members. Fan Tian asks, what is PvP? Mu Rong says that this is a battle between players. 
After registration is completed, new and old club members will compete against other players or against each other. During battles, one can analyze the strengths and weaknesses of rivals, the degree of tacit agreement, synchronization of actions, and so on to determine whether they have the right to join society. He adjusts his glasses and says that, for example, he has already completed registration. He gets up from the table and says that he can play with him in a one-on-one -on -one game. Fang Tian asks, will they do it here and now? Mu Rong says that this is a temporary playground specially prepared by their club to recruit newcomers. Since the formalities have been completed, why don't they start first? Fang Tian smiles and agrees, saying that he doesn't need to propose twice. Some time later. Mu Rong stands in the middle of the forest playing with a sword in his hand. He looks around and wonders, where did he go? Has he already used the assassin technique, stealth? When the sneak killer attacks, he will appear in his original form. As long as possible, the killer will avoid direct confrontation with the warrior. Fang Tian sits on a tree next to him and thinks that the type of swordsman warrior is different from fighters with an axe or great sword. It has both gain and control. However, his whole body is exposed, it looks like he is a beginner. He quietly approached him and struck him with the hilt of his dagger. With this blow, he stunned Mu Rong and he stood in place, clutching his head. Fang Tian thinks that if he hits his opponent in the face with the handle, it will stun him for three and a half seconds he just wants to try out new skills. He goes behind Mu Rong and thinks that this skill can also disorient the opponent so that he can control the entire situation as a whole. This is a very powerful control skill. He attacks from behind and scores a critical hit. Mu Rong notices that his health points were reduced by half from this blow and thinks that of course, as Liu he said, this killer's coming out was too scary. He begins to release a strong aura around himself and this surprised Fang Tian. He knelt down due to this aura, and Mu Rong swung his sword to strike. Fang Tian managed to jump aside from this attack, and he thinks that this guy has disappeared again, how annoying it is, but he is also not so simple. Fang Tian quickly jumps to the side to dodge this attack. Mu Rong looks at him, and thinks that even though every attack from this guy is a critical hit, this strong stealth skill has a long cooldown. Now he has half his health left. He will see what else he has to fight him. He uses the dash skill and approaches him very quickly. Fang Chan was surprised to see him in front of him and thinks that he rushed to try out new skills and now they are all restored and he cannot use his new skill in such a situation. He won't be able to dodge this attack. Mu Rong swung his sword and used the deadly breakthrough skill. They stand with their backs to each other and the system notifies that the duel is completed. Shimao looks at this and asks what she thinks about this. Kin Yen is surprised and says that using a hilt strike technique to stun an opponent is at the level of a professional competition. Shimao turns to her and says that although this Fang Chan is very familiar with the total freedom mode, the combat effectiveness of his talent is not very good, and this may be due to his fighting style. Kin Yin checks the papers and says that it looks like what he is looking for is a brutal display of power. There are also problems using skills. However, after training, actual strength can be significantly improved. She seems to have underestimated him before. Shimao thinks about it, looking at him, and says that this guy is really very promising. Mu Rong extends his hand to Fang Tian, who takes off his virtual reality helmet and says that he is truly amazing. He felt that Liu he was showing off. If it weren't for his professional skills and experience, he would not have been able to defeat him. They shook hands and he asks, seeing how talented he is, is it worth going into complete freedom mode? Fang Chan agrees with this. Mu Rong says that he hopes that he can join them so that they can become teammates. Fang Chan leaves and thinks that he was careless and treated his opponent as a beginner. He practiced various skills but did not kill his opponent when he had the opportunity. His master once said that he must remember that when a person thinks that he is safe, then he is not far from death. Fang Chan thinks that he seems to have relaxed recently, this should never happen again. Luo Kainbing hugs him and says that he seems to have relaxed lately, this should never happen again. Mu Rong and Liu he are equal in strength, but if he acted as usual, then he would definitely win, this time his speed clearly decreased, he used his skills too early. And why didn't he just hide? Fang Tian says that he doesn't think it would help since he really outplayed him so well. Liu Jianbing is surprised to notice something and says that another big event happened in the game. His tablet says that a huge explosion occurred in the Lost Valley, which turned everything into ruins overnight.